Austin, but I love San Antonio. Bienvenidos. Para las personas que prefieren escuchar esta junta en español, pueden pasar con nuestro equipo de intérpretes al fondo de la sala del Concilio de la Ciudad para recibir asistencia. Si prefieres ver la transmisión desde tu computador o dispositivo móvil, puedes seguir toda la junta completamente en español en la página web sanantonio.gov diagonal TVSA o también desde tu televisor usando el sistema SAP en los canales que ves en la pantalla. Y por último, no olvides descargar la agenda de esta junta en la página web en español de la ciudad de San Antonio en sanantonio.gov diagonal español. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our city council special session. The time is 1.17 p.m. We will call our meeting to order on this August 2nd, 2022. Madam Clerk, could you read the roll? Councilmember Bravo. Here. Councilmember Mickey Rodriguez. Present. Councilmember Villagran. Here. Councilmember Rocha Garcia. Here. Councilmember Castillo. Here. Councilmember Cabello Haberda. Here. Councilmember Sandoval. Here. Councilmember Belize. Councilmember Courage. Present. Councilmember Perry. Here. Mayor Nirenberg. Here. Mayor, we have a quorum. And good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome again to City Council Chambers. We're here today to deliberate a resolution that allows City Council to express our deep concern and stand with San Antonio residents who will be unfairly burdened by state laws that take effect in the aftermath of the Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe versus Wade. We have one item on the agenda, it is that resolution. Uh, note that we have a lot of people in the chambers today to speak. I will, um, after the resolution is read by our clerk, kind of go over the procedures for that public comment period. Uh, but first, I'm going to turn it over to our city clerk to read the resolution which we will deliberate. Resolution. Whereas the city of San Antonio is a city that supports fundamental human and civil rights and has recently passed resolutions calling for action to support women's rights and identifying racism as a public health crisis. And whereas the city of San Antonio honors the rights of people seeking an abortion to bodily autonomy, access to health care services, and control over their private medical decisions, and whereas the Supreme Court of the United States has overturned the 1973 landmark ruling Roe v. Wade, which previously prevented individual states from directly banning abortion, and whereas Access to safe and legal abortion affects health, safety, economic stability, and quality of life. And whereas, on June 16, 2021, Texas Governor Greg Abbott signed into law HB 1280 that criminalizes abortion at the felony level with a sentence of up to 99 years in prison and no exception for rape or incest, which takes effect statewide 30 days after the Supreme Court decision overturning Roe v. Wade, referred to commonly as a trigger law. And whereas the Texas Attorney General acknowledged that the Texas trigger law does not go into effect until 30 days after a Supreme Court judgment, but has suggested that criminal prosecutions can start now under a Texas abortion law passed in 1925. And whereas the three state laws that ostensibly apply to abortion have yet to be reconciled or clarified so that an individual can fully understand what behavior would violate the respective laws. And whereas the council recognizes the Bear County Criminal District Attorney's plan to exercise his discretion in deciding whether to prosecute under the existing state law that criminalizes abortion. And whereas anti-choice legislators have weaponized the language of criminal law to stigmatize reproductive choice and the council considers the phrase abortion, miscarriage, or other reproductive health care act to accurately encompass all criminalized acts under Texas laws which seek to criminalize pregnancy outcomes. And whereas people have a basic human right to medical services and treatment up to and including abortion. And whereas 
inequitable access to health care facilities and particularly eliminating legal access to abortion has been empirically proven to dramatically increase the risk of death and bodily injury, especially within low-income women and communities of color. And whereas the nearest care someone in Bear County could travel for an abortion would be effectively inaccessible to someone who is low income and or has no reliable means of transportation and whereas the resources of the city must always be dedicated to the health and well-being of all its residents and whereas in the 1973 Roe v. Wade majority opinion Supreme Court, Court Justice Harry Blackman stated the right of privacy whether it be founded in the 14th Amendment's concept of personal liberty and restrictions upon state action as we feel it is, or as the District Court determined in the Ninth Amendment's reservation of rights to the people, is broad enough to encompass a woman's decision whether or not to terminate her pregnancy. And whereas the right to privacy should protect doctors, patients, and all others providing abortion-related medical care from undue burdens on the healthcare provider-patient relationship, so long as those decisions occur within, without coercion, force, or negligence. And whereas equitable access to abortion care requires financial and logistical support, most often provided by abortion funds, practical support organizations, and volunteers, and whereas the city has a responsibility to protect its, citizen, its residents from a, any violation of their protected human rights and the free exercise thereof. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City of San Antonio, City Council of the City of San Antonio, Section 1. The City of San Antonio formally condemns any action intended to abrogate the fundamental liberties of its people and affirms its commitment to protecting the right of its residents to make reproductive health decisions, including abortion care, for themselves. Section 2. The City of San Antonio intends to prioritize the protection of reproductive rights in the city's legislative agenda for the upcoming State of Texas legislative session. Section 3. It is the policy recommendation of the City Council that, except to the extent otherwise clearly required by state or federal law, city funds will not be used to store or catalog any report of an abortion, miscarriage, or other reproductive health care act strictly for the purpose of pursuing a criminal investigation. Provide information to any other governmental body or agency about any abortion, miscarriage, or other reproductive health care act strictly for the purpose of pursuing a criminal investigation. Or conduct surveillance or collect information related to an individual or organization strictly for the purpose of determining whether an abortion has occurred to then pursue a criminal investigation, except for aggregated data without personally identifying information or personal health information which is collected for purposes unrelated to criminal investigation, enfor enforcement, or prosecution. Section 4. The City Council policy stated above does not apply in cases where coercion or force is used against the pregnant person or in cases involving conduct criminally negligent in the health of the pregnant person seeking care. Section 5. The City Council recognizes the Bear County Criminal District Attorney's plan to exercise his discretion in deciding whether to prosecute under the existing state law that criminalizes abortion. Section 6. The city manager will update the city council in the event of future changes to federal law, state law, or technology that affects this resolution. Section 7. This resolution is effective, is effective immediately upon receipt of eight affirmative votes. Otherwise, it is effective 10 days after passage. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh to my colleagues, you've heard the resolution. Uh, we will begin a deliberation on the resolution after our public comment period. Uh, for those of you who have uh, come to city chambers to uh, make comment, we thank you for taking the time. Everyone who signed up, or excuse me, everyone who was signed up or in line to sign up by one o'clock will be heard. Uh, and those folks are now registered within uh, our system here. And I'll call you in order of sign up. Uh, in order for everyone to be fairly heard today, individuals will have 90 seconds to make comment. Groups will have up to four minutes. Uh, you are allowed to cede your time to someone else, uh, but you, ha you and they have to be present in the chambers in order to do that. 
Uh, again, I'll, I'll, I'll call names in order of sign up. I'll call the next person signed up to speak. If you can make sure you are attentive and hear your name and start to begin your way forward as you are uh, next to speak, that will help everyone um, be fairly heard and for us to move forward expeditiously. We'll be here for a little while, so get comfortable. Again, thank you for being here. And we'll begin our public comment now with Sarah Johnson. Ms. Johnson, you'll be followed by Deline Garcia. Good afternoon. My name is Sarah Johnson. Uh, I live in District 4, and I am a woman. I have a uterus. I have two young daughters, and I am a constituent of this city. In their dissenting opinion in, on Dobbs v. Jackson, Justice Breyer, Sotomayor, and Kagan wrote, when Roe and Casey disappear, the loss of power, control, and dignity will be immense. After today, young women will come of age with fewer rights than their mothers and grandmothers had. This court betrays its guiding principles. With sorrow for the many millions of American women who today have lost a fundamental constitutional protection, we dissent. If I were given the opportunity to sign my name to the dissenting opinion, I would. But I can't. I am not a student of law. I am not a judge. And I will never sit at the bench of the Supreme Court justices. My dissent to the overturning of Roe v. Wade takes other forms. And so will yours. You, council members, have been given an opportunity today by passing this resolution to sound your voices in dissent. The wealthy and the white will always be able to access abortions, and San Antonio is neither predominantly wealthy nor white. Economically criminalizing abortion is just another way of trapping people in perpetual poverty. Dissent today by passing the resolution without delay. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. Delene Garcia. Ms. Garcia, you'll be followed by Rachel Rabini. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Delene. I'm a 19-year-old college student, an essential worker, and a San Antonio resident from District 9. I just want to begin by saying I'm tired. No person should ever be told what to do with their bodies. By doing so, you take away our rights and free agency were guaranteed at birth. I'm tired of seeing people die avoidable deaths. I'm tired of seeing people serve up to life sentences for providing abortion care. I'm so tired of seeing forced births. Forced births in a country where 192 Republicans voted against providing 28 million in aid to address the baby formula storage shortage. Forced birth in a country with no universal health care and where the cost of giving birth is anywhere from $4,000 to $15,000. Forced birth in a country where gun violence is the number one cause of death among children and teenagers. Forced birth with no universal child care and where child care costs an average of $14,117 yearly. Forced birth in a country where birth givers of color experience maternal mortality two to three times higher than that of white birth givers. Forced birth in a country that is only that is the only wealthy country in the world without guaranteed paid parental leave at the national level. Forced birth in a country where there are over 400,000 children in foster care at significantly higher risk of and experiencing mental and physical health problems. San Antonio needs to show that they care. They need to decriminalize abortion now. Thank you. Thank you. Rachel Rabini. All right, folks. All right, if I can just ask for your patience just one second. There's a lot of folks in here who have very strong opinions uh, and feelings about what we're discussing today. In order for us to get through this fairly without us having to pause the meeting or recess the meeting because we're unable to keep order, I'm going to have, have to ask everybody to keep their applause down, even if you agree. And there are other sounds down if you disagree, just so we can make sure we hear everybody speak fairly and we can get through uh, in, in as orderly a manner as possible. So if you can bear with us, uh, we'll keep moving. We'll start with R Rachel Rabini. And right after Rachel will be Victoria Ramirez. 
Hi everyone, Rachel Arbani of District 1. I stand in support of this resolution. Excuse my voice. Um, my abortions improved my life immeasurably. They were so obviously the right decision for me and therefore two of the easiest decisions I've ever made. 15 years later, not one moment have I felt regret. In fact, each day I grow more grateful. Only now I fully realize how lucky I was to be able to practice autonomy over my body, to access healthcare without the interference of religious terrorists acting alongside the state. <laughs> Excuse me. These claims that abortions hurt women are wrong and are ignorant and blanket state, they're blanket statements that fail to recognize the complexity of varying experiences and belief systems. My abortions did not hurt me. They lifted me up and as a result, I was able to lift up the people around me, including the children in my life. Abortions are normal. Abortions are responsible. Abortions are healthcare. Abortions are a community good. Why would we use city resources to punish a community good? It's nonsensical. It's cruel. We are living during a time where the climate crisis will destroy all life on Earth if not addressed. All of our resources should be focused on climate action, saving life on Earth from ecological collapse. So there's a livable planet for all our wanted pregnancies. Pass the resolution. Thank you, Ms. Rabani. Um, Victoria Ramirez, followed by Galaxy Acton. Um, Mayor uh, Victoria, Jake Tucker, and Brett. Uh, all we all signed up together as the party. It should be it should be registered somewhere on the list. Oh, okay. As a group. As a group, we should be also later down on the list. I okay, I haven't gotten a written list yet. I'm still working off the tablet. So, uh, all three of you are signed up as a group. Yes. Give me your names again. Jake Tucker. Jake Tucker. Brett all. I'm sorry. Brett all. Brett. Brett all. Could you spell that? I can't. I can't. B r e t t a u l l. Brett all, and Victoria. Yes. Okay, go ahead, y'all have four minutes. Okay, we are the party for socialism and liberation and we are here today speaking in front of city council because we are in a public health emergency. Texas, um, hence why we and other organizers across San Antonio have been organizing demonstration after demonstration where we demanded the passing of the Grace Act. The resolution in front of us today um, um, is not what we have demanded for in the streets. What this resolution is, is incomplete. This resolution includes the first tenet of the Grace Act that blocks city funding from going towards the collection, investigation, or sharing of information in regards to abortion, miscarriage, or any reproductive health issue. This is not enough. What is missing from the resolution is the second tenant of the Grace Act that would make abortion and other reproductive health care issues SAPD's lowest priority. Um, the police have no place meddling in reproductive health issues, and we know city council knows this, as the resolution states that the right to privacy should protect doctors, patients, and all others providing abortion-related medical care. This city council has spent a year on a campaign allegedly fighting for domestic violence and abuse in order, in order to protect the women of San Antonio. But if they won't show the courage to do everything that they can do um, to stand against these sexist attacks coming from the state and federal government, then they are, in fact, against their own people, regardless of what their speeches say. This is no time for cowardice or fear. When the state forces people to give birth under conditions where health care and housing are not a human right, it is forcing people into relationships of domestic violence and abuse due to economic necessity. If city council cannot pass the Grace Act in its entirety, then this domestic violence campaign is performative. You need to show that you truly care about the women in your community. This half-done resolution does not do enough for the women uh, that city council claims it wants to protect. Us and the uh, us organizers and the people that have joined us um, have shown courage by engaging in direct action in protest to the trigger ban and vigilante bill. Your, con your constituents that are already at risk due to Texas's oppressive laws have taken up more risk by choosing to fight alongside us. So we need city council to show the same amount of courage your constituents have. 
We are not in a position to leave things up to chance and cut corners. This is exactly how Roe v. Wade got overturned and remained uncodified for 40 years. San Antonio City Council has the opportunity to show it is truly in touch with the people of Texas by passing this resolution as 78% of Texans do not support the total ban on abortion, according to the University of Texas at Austin. Um, I want to stress that number. 78% of Texans do not believe there should be a total ban on abortion. Those numbers do not drastically change in the city of San Antonio. City Council needs to be an example of democracy in the state of Texas and represent the masses of people that think a total abortion ban is unjust. Do not leave people behind and instead protect our most valued populations, working class and poor people of color. Your constituents voted you in because we wanted you to be here for us. We want you to protect our neighbors. Nobody should go to jail for accessing health care. City council members, I want to stress to you that it is perhaps a risky decision to pass the Grace Act in its entirety, but your constituents, your constituents need you to take that risk. We mentioned earlier that you cannot be afraid of not getting reelected or, or getting sued, but we will not show up for you, but we will show up for you if you truly show up for us. The people of Texas have been forced into being at risk because of Texas House Bill 1280 and Texas Senate Bill 8. So take the risk so your constituents do not have to. Your constituents elected you to represent them and now you need to protect them. Thank you. Thank you very much. Galaxy Acton. Galaxy Acton will be followed by Pedro Bjorn Ovin Suarez. Afternoon, council members. My name is Galaxy Acton, and I'm a resident of San Antonio, Texas, a student with Students for Life Action, and president of Students for Life at UTSA. Thank you. I'm here today to oppose the resolution to support an individual's right to health care. Why are you choosing to fight for abortion access when you should be fighting for the 18-year-old student at UTSA who found out she is pregnant, providing her with financial and material resources to provide for her child, finish school, and love her daughter or son? Why must university students such as our organization step in to help women and men because the city is too focused on passing nonsense resolutions such as this? I want to live in a city where women are told they will be successful when they face an unplanned pregnancy, not only when she ends the life of her child. I have seen the impact of abortion on campus. I had a father disclose to me how he and his wife had to pick up their dead child from the bathroom floor after taking the abortion pill, after being lied to by abortion facilities. This is why I oppose this resolution. Moreover, as citizens, we have already voted on this issue. We elected our representatives who have passed the heartbeat law and the trigger law. Thus, this resolution should not pass. Finally, who are you to allow the DA to choose what laws to prosecute? May I remind you, according to the Constitution, no one is above the law, and that includes you. I strongly oppose this resolution, and I ask you to do so too. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Ms. Acton. Patrick Von Dolan. All right, folks, again, I'm gonna call the next name in order of the sign up. If you do not hear it because folks are cheering, I'm gonna move right along. So let's cooperate with everybody so they can hear their names. And I'm gonna call the next person up, Pedro Bjorn Ovin Suarez, followed by Patrick Von Dolan. Good afternoon, members of the city council and my fellow San Antonians. Planned Parenthood has five abortion facilities in San Antonio. Thankfully, they have now stopped providing abortions. These facilities include Planned Parenthood San Pedro, which is in a Hispanic majority neighborhood and is walking distance from San Antonio College. Planned Parenthood Babcock, which is found in a Hispanic majority neighborhood and is walking distance away from UT Health Science Center and a quick drive from UTSA. Planned Parenthood Northeast, Southeast, and Marbach are all found in Hispanic majority neighborhoods. It seems almost as if Planned Parenthood has tiptoed around white majority neighborhoods targeting our Hispanic communities. My name is Pedro Bjorn Abin Suarez. I'm a student of UTSA, Vice President of Students for Life at UTSA. I'm a Texas Right to Life Fellow and Students for Life of America Invictus Fellow. I'm a Mexican immigrant 
um, that, who through the efforts of my parents was blessed to come to San Antonio in 2011. Planned Parenthood was founded by known racist Margaret Sanger with the sole purpose of eugenics, exterminating majority populations. Although Planned Parenthood has uh, disowned her and her extremist views, uh, her e e efforts and mission is still being done by, by Planned Parenthood all across our nation in the city of San Antonio. I ask today to not take the easy road out. Stand with us to rebuild Texas community by supporting and loving women. Uh, please support this nonsense resolution. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Suarez. Patrick Von Dolan, followed by Scott King. Patrick Von Dolan. Good afternoon. I have to say in the city of San Antonio, and I'm sorry that John Courage just walked out of here, what a pitiful sight this is that we are even considering this resolution. A city that was built on a seed of faith, planted here in 1691. If you would, show that, show that image if you would. Thank you very much. This gentleman right here is Venerable Father Anthony Marhill that came here and established two of the missions here in Mission San Jose in particular. He came holding a cross high between two warring tribes of Indians, bringing them to peace. Those Native Americans that you speak so highly about, the indigenous people. Folks, I'm going to pause the time, and I'm going to remind everybody to give the respect to the speaker at the podium, no matter what side of the argument they're on. If you cannot, you will be removed from the chambers. All right, go ahead. This man came here to bring peace to the indigenous people. What you're doing today is talking about bringing destruction and demolition to families, to individuals, to women. The same indigenous people, the people that native would hear, and the people of us, by doing this. Yet across the border, flowing across, you're doing everything you can to protect Ill illegal immigration. Let's protect all immigration, including the innocent, unborn migrants trying to migrate out of their, their mom's wombs. This picture is a man who came here to start San Antonio. That's what we're here to do. It's your job to fulfill it. It's government's job to protect individuals, especially women and those in need. Thank you, Mr. Von Dolan. I have time from R Richard Favela. I have time from Richard Favela. Is somebody ceding time to Mr. Von Dolan? Richard Favela. You would put that up. Hold on one second. Let me, let me find your name on the list. Do you have the number? Is there anyone else who's ceding time to you? Mr. Von Dolan? Richard Vavella? Anybody else? Is there anyone else who is ceding time to you, Mr. Von Dolan, besides Mr. Favella? Jerry Peters. Geraldine Peters. Geraldine Peters, one second. Okay, go ahead. I would like to direct your attention to the image now, because this is what we're talking about right now. This isn't about women's health. This is about the destruction and demolition of women. Abortion makes women emotionally unstable. New, a new, 80% more likely of thinking about suicide, 80% more likely of committing suicide than a woman who goes through with the term to her pregnancy. This image right here, if you can blow it up just on the four images there, this is this is a D and E, this is a D and E abortion. Go back a little bit if you would. This shows the process of of cutting up a child using a knife called a scalpel, and then pulling the child out with forceps, all for the convenience of a mom. Yes, she needs to be protected. Yes, she needs to be provided for. Yes, there are people right here willing to do that. The state of Texas has just allocated 100 million more dollars to help women in need, pre in pre prenatal in delivery and after delivery. The state of Texas has a safe haven law called the Baby Moses Law. 
A woman, after, up to six months after giving birth, she can take her child to a hospital, to a fire station, with no questions asked, and turn the child over, and the state of Texas will provide for that child for the next 18 years of that child's life. There is no reason to have an abortion. There's no reason to put a woman through this procedure that cuts up a, cuts up a child and, and many times perforates uteruses. Many times women have to go to the hospital because of botched abortions. This is not a safe, uh, this is not a safe procedure. It is a blind procedure. A doctor, an abortionist, not a doctor, an abortionist cannot see what they're doing. They're going in there by sight and by feel and touch, not by sight. This is a procedure that harms them. I want to bring your attention to one more thing from the Archbishop of San Antonio who has written to y'all and he says here at the, in, the, in this, I urge the city council to reject the proposed resolution and join with people of goodwill in our faith communities to work to build a, new, a true culture of life in this wonderful city of St. Anthony, a community which has had a faith in its forefront since the establishment of it in 1718. Ladies and gentlemen, you refer to Archbishop Gustavo anytime you want to pass a social measure. You need to listen to him now. You've used him maybe as a tool to push your social agenda. You need to listen to him now and use his words now that say clearly not to pass this. This is not healthy for women. It's not healthy for, for babies. It's not healthy for families. Thank you, Mr. Von Dolan. Scott King. Scott King. Mr. King, you'll be followed by Carolyn Eckbach. Thank you. My name's Scott King. I'm a resident of San Antonio. In 1973, the Supreme Court, uh, basis for their decision in the Roe versus Wade, thank you. Their basis of the decision, they said it was the First Amendment, the Fourth Amendment, the Ninth Amendment, the Fourteenth Amendment. In none of those amendments do you find anything mentioned about abortion. You don't find anything mentioned about uh, termination of a pregnancy. You find nothing related to abortion in any of that. And so my question is, uh, you have all, I'm assuming, you have all taken an oath of office. And I think that oath of office uh, exactly uh, specifies that you're going to defend, protect uh, the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of Texas. And so I'm saying, you know, if you do this resolution, there's something about uh, a failure here where you don't want to go along with what the rules, what the laws are. You're breaking your oath of office if you do this because this is against, this is against everything that, that our laws specify. Now, this thing, this, this court, this, this present court who's been claimed to be the radical, they're out of control. The radical out of control court was the one in 1973. And the, and the way I look at this is you folks putting this resolution up, you're confusing people to what the truth is. And if you don't uh, listen and, and see, uh, you know, this is like uh, when you've got a, 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 a George Soros-backed DA who basically he has said, basically he said he's not going to, he's not going to, uh, he's going to selectively enforce the law. And uh, as far as you folks, you Thank say you, Mr. you're not going to. Thank you, Mr. King. Carolyn Eckback, followed by Jody Deutsch. Hi, my name is Carolyn Eckback, and I reside in District 9. I am a single mom to a five-year-old daughter. I am a student of psychology at UTSA. I am an activist at heart and a member of, with, of Without a Strike, Mujeres Marcheron, Bear County Young Dems, and YDSA. I never felt more strongly pro-abortion than after I gave birth. I had a complicated pregnancy with prepartum depression and chronic pain, but this was in 2017 in Gothenburg, Sweden, a country that has 18-month paid parental leave and $200 a month child credit. After the pregnancy, my health declined drastically. I started getting flare-ups of pain and inflammation that have not stopped. I don't have insurance, and I'm unable to work to make ends meet. So you bet your ass I am here today to give my thoughts on this matter. Passing the Grace Act is the bare minimum of what y'all should do as our elected officials. 
This fight, our fight for the people who need reproductive health care services, is only just the beginning. We are expecting you and holding all of you accountable for working all angles that you can to help give us back what we deserve to be equal once again. So if you truly care about equity, you will show us your actions and not just exchange words. Defying a governor is a small risk to pay when it could save hundreds to millions of people who need reproductive justice and abortion access. I see my time. Thank you, Ms. Esbach. Jody Deutsch, followed by Vanessa Peretta. So I'm here today to witness that in 2022, we as citizens of a country that the world has looked to for innovation, guidance, strength, and justice, almost since its founding, are staring into the eyes of a beast. A beast that has overturned a 50-year-old law and pronounced a new law for the country that strips half its citizens of their bodily autonomy and privacy, that limits and in Texas eliminates the ability of trained medical professionals from providing life-saving health care to women and other pregnant people. I'm not here to change minds today. I'm here because I am beyond angry. I will not allow lawmakers to disenfranchise, to impose their morality or religious beliefs on us, or to hang their personal fear of God on us. I will not allow legislators to insinuate that we are not capable enough or educated enough to know what is good for us, and I will not allow them to blindly dictate actions that affect our, more, our mental, physical, financial, or spiritual health and well-being or that of our families. I'm here to stand in support of people seeking life-affirming health care. I will use my voice, my vote, and my feet in support of the right to choose what's best for us as individuals and to protect the rights of low-income people and communities of color who historically and repeatedly suffer the most. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Deutsch. Vanessa Peretta. Vanessa Peretta. Okay, Ashley Lenertz. Ashley Lenertz. Antonia Taylor. Ms. Taylor, you'll be followed by Stephen Versteeg. Hi, my name is Antonia Taylor, and I stand today with my black siblings, the youth, the women, birthing people, working class people. I stand with the San Antonio community as we fight for a fundamental human right that is abortion. This attack is not only on abortion, but our bodily autonomy and medical privacy. Today, I elect the city council to protect their constituents and to ensure San Antonio Police Department does not exhaust funds into criminalizing abortion and to those who assist abortion as well. Black people, low-income people, people of color, indigenous people, disabled people, all of us demand that we have health care, demand that we have abortions, demand that we have life, demand that we have privacy. You all are here and we pay you to sit here and vote for us, so please help us as we sit here and fight for abortion. No one's religious and personal beliefs should interfere with my personal right to obtain an abortion, to help my friends and family with an abortion. So please vote on behalf of your constituents, the people who vote you in. And please help us as we hear today just to fight for something better, for something better for our community. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Taylor. Stephen Versteeg. Mr. Versteeg, you'll be followed by Diet Cole. Good afternoon, Steve Versteeg, 105 Reno Street. Um, hello, Council. I am fully supportive of life. I am a pro quality of life person. And who decides what is the best quality of life? for any individual, only that person. The SAPD mission statement starts, the city, the San Antonio Police Department is dedicated to improving the quality of life. This resolution supports that mission. San Antonio's motto is cradle of liberty. Well, it's in Latin, that's the translation. Our state government seems to want to create a cradle, a cage of liberty, how hypocritical to be against more government control, against the U.S. making laws for states, yet at the same time, our state 
It's creating laws for their citizens and mun municipalities that force biological restrictions on people. The laws taking effect and the ones that may lead, they may lead to are creating an environment of fear. Fear due to loss of control and choices about health care. It is forcing women, like my daughter, to consider sterilization rather than subjugation. I fully support making it a clear policy of the city that employees will not actively collect information that will put health care choices at risk. Doing nothing and increasing quality of life. Councilman Perry, that is the best ROI I've heard of in a long time. I support this resolution because it improves health and mental health and improves the quality of life for the families, the women, and the men of San Antonio. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Versteeg. Diet Cole, followed by Ian Hernandez. My name is Diet Cole. I'm a proud District 2 homeowner and a proud D10 small business retail owner. Bodily autonomy is about the right to make decisions over one's own life and future. Not only is it a human right, it is the foundation upon which other human rights are built. To quote HB 3755 from the Women's Protection Act of 2021, abortion specific restrictions are a tool of gender oppression. These paternalistic restrictions reinforce harmful stereotypes about gender roles, women's decision making, and women's need for protection, undermining women's ability to control their own lives and well being. These restrictions harm the basic autonomy, dignity, and equality of women and their ability to participate in the social and economic life of the nation. Reproductive justice is a human right that can and will be achieved when all people, regardless of actual or perceived race, color, national origin, immigration status, sex, including gender identity or sexual orientation, age or disability status, have the economic, social, and political power and resources to define and make decisions about their bodies, health, sexuality, families, and communities in all areas of their lives with dignity and self-determination." Protection of our individual rights to define and drive our destiny is everything and paramount to living in a free society. I stand and wholeheartedly support this resolution in defense of abortion and ask that each council member join in passing it here today. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Cole. Ian Hernandez. Mr. Hernandez, you'll be followed by Venus Woodworth. Right here. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen of the council, Mr. Mayor, ladies and gentlemen here in the chamber, I am here representing Church Militant Resistance Group for the Archdiocese of San Antonio, Texas. I'm a Catholic, a Roman Catholic I have been since the day that I was born. This city was founded on a foundation of faith, the cathedral that we're so close to right in here, as a matter of fact, is the oldest cathedral in the entire country. The jewel in the heart of San Antonio, as it's called, is St. Joseph's Catholic Church. It's the duty of every single member of this council body, as well as you, Mr. Mayor, and the duty of every member of every government all across this nation and all across this world, most especially here in San Antonio, Texas, to defend every citizen, every life. And it's the duty of every Catholic out there to make every woman understand that it's not our goal to make abortion illegal. It's our goal to make abortion unthinkable. And so, whatever it may take, however long it may stand, we must understand and voice our opposition to things like this, and first and foremost, make women understand that that is absolutely a life that grows within inside them, and that every time that they consider ending that, uh, that they consider ending that baby's life, they are harming also not only that child but most especially themselves, because the soul is greater than the body, and this is what we must safeguard. First and foremost, the Archbishop of San Antonio, Texas, has informed you guys of many decisions over the years, and if he himself is speaking out against things, speaking out against you, whenever he has supported you in so many other resolutions, it should tell you, it should tug at your conscience, and I'd like everybody to understand that Jesus loves you and he has a plan for you. Thank and you, Mr. Father, Hernandez. The Holy Ghost. Venus Woodworth. <laughs> Ms. Woodworth, you'll be followed by Catherine Nix. Hi. <laughs> Um, my name is Venus Woodworth. Um, I am a member of the San Antonio chapter of the Democratic Socialists of America, and I am a resident of District 1. I would like to voice my strong support of the passage of the Individual Right to Health Care Resolution and thank my councilman, Mario Bravo, uh, excuse me, sorry, for, for previously committing his support to the resolution's passage. 
I would also like to thank D5 Councilwoman Terry Castillo for taking steps to introduce this resolution. I would like to remind everyone that historically it was less than 100 years ago in American history when abortion as a practice was twisted into a moral and a religious issue. A culture of fear and shame has shrouded this area of reproductive care, forcing those who have sought or seek abortion to live in fear of verbal and physical forms of backlash. But abortion is health care, and health care is a human right. Those who need or offer that care should not be policed by society or criminalized for doing so. I wish that someone had framed it this way when I found myself unexpectedly pregnant seven years ago and had to face one of the most personal choices I have ever had to make. Also, I am emotionally stable. Um, but I had a choice. I had a choice. Um, and I had the privilege of access. My choice is a lot easier to make than, than it is now. Thank you, Ms. Thank Woodworth. Catherine Nix. Ms. Nix, you'll be followed by Bianca Cortez. My name is Dr. Catherine Nix, and I am the director of San Antonio Coalition for Life. The statements in this resolution, which cite the health and well-being of residents and the protection of human rights, are in contradiction to the health, well-being, and rights of the pre-born of San Antonio. Whether or not the council agrees with the current laws, its responsibility is to uphold them. Clearly, this resolution is drafted to support abortion. But does the city understand what it's defending? A woman does not abort her own body, she aborts someone else's body. What of the bodily autonomy of the preborn child? To clarify the law, no woman in Texas will be prosecuted for obtaining an abortion, and by definition, treatment for miscarriage and ectopic pregnancies are not abortions and cannot be prosecuted. Please hear this. Under no circumstances can a woman on whom an abortion is performed be held criminally or civilly liable under HB 1280 or any other Texas law. Though subject to prosecution would be those performing abortions, HB 1280 requires the loss of medical license of a doctor, nurse, pharmacist who participates in this illegal abortion. What type of abortionist would then be protected by this res resolution, and why would the city seek to protect those working outside of the law? By deprioritizing the investigation and prosecution of those who perform or assist in illegal abortions, this council does not help the women of San Antonio. It supports those who traffic women and will be caused significant risks to their health, safety, and very lives. This resolution was drafted to express disagreement with current laws that protect innocent human life. If the intention is truly to help women, why not pass a resolution Thank you, Dr. to Nix. help them? Thank, Thank you. you, Dr. Nix. Thank you. Bianca Cortez, followed by Nicolette Ardiente. Nicolette Ardiente. Ms. Ardiente, you'll be followed by David Reynolds. Hello, good afternoon, oh sorry. Um, I'm Nicolette Ardiente, my pronouns are she, her, sha. I'm a graduate student at St. Mary's University in San Antonio and a proud daughter of Filipino immigrants and a resident of District 8. I'm here before you representing Bear County Young Democrats as the president. I'm speaking in support of item number one on the resolution uh, of the city of San Antonio to support individuals' rights to health care and the guarding the right to abortion care for everyone act overall. As you know, the Supreme Court has overturned Roe v. Wade, trampling on decades of legal precedent. In the immediate aftermath, Bear Young Dems marched. We spoke. We shouted for our city to respond and protect our reproductive freedoms. This city has finally responded by calling a special session to address this issue. And we organize for some of our Bear Young Dems to be here today, some who have full-time jobs, some who have families to support, to show up and testify in favor of abortion access for San Antonians. Protecting abortion access from the Rouge Supreme Court is a life and death issue, as allowing these rights to be taken away will absolutely cause pregnant people to die from pregnancy complications or illegal abortions using unsafe methods. I'm also here to speak on the decriminalization of health care. I'm sorry, space criminalization of our health, I've lost my place, I'm sorry, for our black and brown and underserved communities throughout the city. So you all as our elected officials have an obligation to teach our community about local legislation to protect abortion seekers, our state trigger ban, and how to support a Texan's decision to have an abortion. Thank you, Ms. Ardiente. Thank you. David Reynolds. Kelsey Brown, Bear County Young Democrats. I yield my time to David Reynolds. All right, I've got David Reynolds next. Is it, is, 
Are you David Reynolds? Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, and I'm sorry, you're ceding your time to, to David. What's your name again? Kelsey Okay, gotcha. You have uh, three minutes. Awesome. Hello, my name is David Runnels. I'm a second year law student at St. Mary's University School of Law, and I serve as the president of the Democratic Law Student Association at St. Mary's, as well as the co-director of communications at the uh, Bear County Young Democrats. Um, I support um, the resolution at issue. Uh, reproductive freedom for pregnant uh, San Antonians is vital uh, for ensuring that pregnant people have the medical care they need. Because there are many anti-choice activists testifying today, it's important to set the record straight. Getting rid of abortions won't stop abortions. It will only drive abortions underground. It will cause two courses of action. One, it will force pregnant San Antonians to go out of state to obtain an abortion. This will lead to more uh, dangerous healthcare system in Texas, a state where the overall birthing mortality rate, 18.5 deaths per 100,000 uh, births, is above the national average of 17.4 deaths per 100,000 births. Complications that require abortion procedures will not be allowed um, or will be shrouded in legal ambiguity, making doctors hesitate and costing them valuable time that they could be using to save the pregnant person's life. It will also lead to more inequity in our healthcare system as people with the means to leave the state for an abortion will be the only people able to obtain one, leaving people living in poverty and people living in rural communities behind. Well, they will be stuck with course of action number two, secret illegal abortions. These abortions will not only be illegal, but they will also be potentially life-threatening because of the lack of health safety regulation due to the illegality of the procedures. However, with no other options, many pregnant San Antonians without the means to get an out-of-state abor abortion would be forced to take this action. In conclusion, I ask this esteemed council to pass the resolution so that we can encourage our city law enforcement to preserve the reproductive freedoms of pregnant San Antonians. Although it is not nearly enough, this resolution is a good starting point to protecting abortion access in San Antonio. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Runnels. I yield the rest of my time to Ms. Zabapa. Okay, so you, you can cede your time or you can take your time. You can't do both. So um, I've got Claudia Zapata next. Are you Claudia? Yes, I am. Okay, you have a minute and a half unless you have some folks who are going to cede time to you. Not, you already took your time, David. So is there somebody else? No, it's, I can finish, I can okay. go through. All go right. ahead, Ms. Zapata. Uh, hi everyone, good afternoon. My name is Claudia Zapata and I'm a resident of Hayes County and currently a nominee for US Congress in Texas's 21st Congressional District, which encapsulates a large part of San Antonio. I stand here today in support of decriminalizing abortion in the city of San Antonio. Passage of the Grace Act does just that. It provides grace to those who are seeking abortion health care, where in many cities in Texas and throughout the nation, they will Will not be given a choice. Instead, people making their own decision about their own bodies will be prosecuted for exercising their individual bodily autonomy. There have been a total of 8,187 induced terminations of pregnancy in Texas, according to the Texas Health and Human Services Commission. Of those, 8,180 of them have occurred at eight weeks of gestation or less. The anti-abortion sentiments you have heard today are based on misinformation and fear-mongering. Abortion is a life-saving medical procedure. You have the ability today to protect our bodily autonomy, our right to privacy, and our future. Look at everyone in this room who shared their abortion stories. Look at everyone, including myself, people who are have the ability to become pregnant and tell me, would you feel okay with prosecuting any of us for making a decision that we alone get to make or had to make? I beg that you pass today's resolution without delay because my future, the future of anyone who is able to become pregnant does not belong in your hands. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Zapata. Thank you, Mr. Reynolds. Thank you all very much. Gladys Cortez. Ms. Cortez, you'll be followed by Desiree Lucky. I am a mother, a wife, and a teacher. I have had three abortions. I have had two miscarriages, which my professional provider performed a DNC afterwards. That is a simple term for a surgical abortion. 
These are the people that are going to be affected by these abortion bans. This is essential health care to ensure that my health and my future pregnancies would not have any further complications. I chose to have my third abortion 10 months after my youngest was born. It wasn't the right time for me. I love my husband. I love my children. I love the family that we have built and we have a happy, healthy, safe home. But having another child would have jeopardized all of that. These are the people that you will be incarcerating. Working class people like myself are going to go to jail because they are making the choices they need to make for their families. Who's going to fill my shoes? Who's going to watch my children? Who's going to tend to my household while I am gone? And when I come out, I will be a felon. Where am I going to work? Where am I going to work? And who is going to support my family when I no longer can? Thank you, Ms. Cortez. Desiree Lucky. Gladys Cortez, because I'm Gladys Cortez. I'm sorry, what's your name, ma'am? Gladys Cortez. All right. Uh, ma'am, who, who just spoke at the podium, did we get her name? What's your name, ma'am? Cortez? Yes. Okay, I, I called you earlier, you didn't come up. But, so you were, you were registered, you didn't, so that's why I need everybody to be able to hear the names. I called you earlier, but you're okay. You got, no, no, no. So you're Gladys Cortez? Correct. Okay, Ms. Cortez, you, you'll go now. Thank you very much, Bianca. Um, Desiree Lucky, are you here? Okay, you're next. All right, Gladys Cortez, yes. uh, your time is now, so go Thank ahead. Thank you. Um, I just want to say that this is such a beautiful city, and it provides a lot of help for single mothers, first-time mothers, mothers with many children. Um, and all you have to do is just look, and there's a lot of help. Don't be afraid to choose life. Don't be afraid, because a planned Abortion is planned murder. That's it. It's very simple. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Cortez. Desiree Lucky, followed by Kimberly Hurst. Good afternoon. My name is Desiree Lucky. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm a resident of District 1. I'm also Director of Policy at URGE, Unite for Reproductive and Gender Equity. I'm here today to thank all council members in advance for their support of today's resolution that would protect the rights of people capable of pregnancy who have abortions in San Antonio. Abortion stigma, white supremacy, and patriarchy prevent people from readily accessing care in their communities, instead forcing people to travel hundreds of miles for clinical abortion care or self-manage their abortions. As a person who has had multiple abortions, including one in San Antonio last summer, I understand the importance of being able to access an abortion in one's own community without fear. My abortions were not hard decisions. They were not traumatic. They were not anything but the healthcare option that I needed to make for myself and my future. What would have made them traumatic is if they led to interactions with the police or to courts as the state of Texas has made a possibility. The threat of interaction with the criminal legal system is enough of a deterrent for some people whose identities do not allow for the risk of criminalization. I request that the city council amend the proposed resolution to include language that explicitly directs law enforcement to deprioritize investigation or support for the prosecution of any allegation, charge, or information relating to the outcome of a given pregnancy, including abortion and abortion-related care. It is imperative that we be both bold and explicit in our actions to protect those seeking abortion care in San Antonio. Thank you again for your support. Thank you, Ms. Lucky. Kimberly Hurst. Ms. Hurst, you'll be followed by Brian DeLeon. Brian DeLeon. 
Mr. De Leon, you'll be followed by Thomas Damro. I'm a native son of San Antonio, Texas. But before I begin, briefly, I want to say that whatever happens today, in the end, the pro-life side will win because we have allied ourselves to the side of truth, goodness, and beauty, the side of Christ Jesus, who even now sits on his throne. Texans who call San Antonio their home do not want to see it turned into a death cult abortion city. Abortion violently ends a human life by starvation, suction, dismemberment, or by inducing a heart attack. I have often wondered what can infect a society and drive it so mad that they commit genocide. The Holocaust in Nazi Germany, six million Jews. The Holodomor in communist USSR, seven million people. During my own time alive under Roe v. Wade America, 63 million babies have been purposefully killed. Instead of forsaking justice, virtue, and righteousness by committing ourselves to the murder of babies, as some wish to do here today, namely the Marxists, the homo-fascists, and the feminists in the back, we should increase funding to the more than, one horn, more than 100 organizations offering free pregnancy tests, shelter, food, and financial help to women in need in Texas, promote abstinence programs as well. I would love to see San Antonio abandon the murder of babies once and for all and cleave to policies that are truly pro-women, pro-choice, and pro-family. Thank you, Mr. De Leon. Thomas Damro. Mr. Damro, you'll be followed by John Sweeney. Mr. Mayor, City Council members, thank you for the opportunity to speak today. I'm asking you to vote against the resolution. Um, I am a member of, uh, resident of District 8. Um, I, it's insulting that you are calling the resolution rights to health care. Over 96% of abortions have nothing to do with the health of the mother. They are to end the life of an innocent child. At a minimum, be bold enough to call it what it is, and that's the killing of a totally innocent human being purely for convenience sake. But let's go beyond the specific topic of abortion. With this resolution, as a city council, you are openly and willingly committing anarchy by not recognizing authority. In this case, the authorities are Texas state law. What kind of example are you setting by brashly thumbing your nose up at state laws? R rules, regulations, ordinances, and laws, and upholding them are necessary in order to have a civil society. With this resolution, you're telling the world that you disregard the law, therefore you won't follow it or uphold it. If as a city council, you're choosing which state laws you will adhere to, does that mean that the rest of us can make those choices as well? And simply write a resolution that says, I don't agree with this law, I'm not gonna abide by it? No, we can't do that because that would be anarchy. Every action, every choice we make, every election has consequences, good, bad, or indifferent. I'm asking you to follow within the state laws and work through the processes and laws in place to change state law in the future by um, orderly and um, electing officials that, that agree with your beliefs. So I'm asking you. Thank you, Mr. Damaro. John Sweeney, followed by Matt Troy. I'm Father John Sweeney, a San Antonio resident, a missionary priest to this city. Thanks for the opportunity to hear from the citizens of this community. In humility, you're listening to debate of reason, science, compassion, to determine how San Antonio can be a best, a safe haven for all of its citizens, women, men, children, old and young. Not far from here in Ovalde, a horrific tragedy took place. Innocent children. Why was it horrific? Because they're innocent, and they're in a place that was supposed to be safe, a school. But a door was left open, and a murderer got in. 19 students, 19 mothers and fathers devastated by loss because a door was left open. This resolution will also leave a door open for the horrors of abortion in our community, no different than Uvalde. The most innocent, the pre-born children in what is supposed to be the most safest place in the world, a mother's womb. Killed by chemical, by medicine, by suction, their mothers and fathers forever devastated. Shut this door. Mothers, mothers forced by a society that say there is no choice, no hope, no other way other than to kill your child. While the resolution speaks to racism, since a disproportionate share of abortions happen to preborn children of color, I would challenge all of us to see a procedure that eliminates and kills our children of color and not giving them a chance at life and opportunity in this great city as being the most racist of all institutions. Shut this door. Employers will support this resolution because it means less maternity leave and better worker productivity and output if their workers don't stay pregnant. Shut this door. I encourage you to focus the city's efforts to support pregnant moms and dads and their preborn children. Thank you, Thank you, Father Sweeney. 
Matt Troy. Mr. Troy, you'll be followed by Elsa Escobedo Lopez. At what point does God give us our souls? Is it after, our, after we are born? Is it on our first birthday? Is it after we are baptized? The answer is upon our conception. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, through his power of divine mercy, will forgive us all if we stand with him. No one has the right to take a life. Adoption is a beautiful choice. We have an eternity to think about the choices we make today. Please vote with God and against this resolution today. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Troy. Elsa Escobedo Lopez, followed by Samantha Farnsworth. Hi, my name is Elsa Escobedo Lopez. I am a director of a ministry called Abortion Hurts, God Heals. I am a native San Antonian. I am 61 years old, and I had an abortion when I was 23. I am part of a ministry of over 75 women in the San Antonio area since 19, I'm sorry, since 2016 who have had abortions, and we all have abortion stories. If you, uh, we want you to know the, uh, of our experiences and the abortions that we had because we know that abortion hurts, it kills the baby, and it destroys families. Um, even the fathers who uh, beg the mother to not abort their child are hurting. Our city, our state, our nation, our world needs to know abortion hurts women, it destroys families, and it kills babies because the abortion clinic facilities are really not a health care facility. They do not offer health care, per se, like women's uh, OBGYN needs, and I've been there. They are... They are, in the opinion of us women who have had abortions and have been in those clinics, a place where you will have an abortion. It doesn't matter who you are, you're a number, and they don't do care afterwards. They don't. All right, folks, I'm going to recess the meeting, and we're going to sit here until we can be quiet for folks who are at the podium. If we'd like to continue, keep it down so all folks who have signed up can be heard. Please continue, Elsa. Thank you. I spoke in front of the Capitol, the state Capitol, in January. I let those know who will still benefit to learn that there is safe haven law that, ha that takes your baby and asks questions, just no questions, just simply uh, loving people who do want to care for your child. There's many people that cannot have children, so adoption is an option. We just want people to know that even though you are pregnant and you're in a situation where you're not sure what to do and you're afraid your child would have Down syndrome, abortion is not the answer, so I do not support Thank you, Mr. Ms. Escobedo Lopez. Thank Samantha you. Farnsworth. Ms. Farnsworth, you'd be followed by Betty Eckert. Members of the council, thank you for this opportunity to speak to you this morning. My name is Samantha Farnsworth. I'm a legislative associate for Texas Right to Life, a recent alumna of Trinity University, and I'm here to speak against this resolution. The first line of the resolution states that the city of San Antonio is a city that supports fundamental human and civil rights, as it should. The problem is that this resolution completely removes human rights of the preborn child in the womb. It is a scientific fact that life begins at fertilization. Rather than seeking a solution that ensures that all people, including preborn people, are afforded their rights, this council is attempting attempting to subvert justly passed state law written and adopted by our elected state officials. Section two refers to the protection of reproductive rights. There are a few people opposed to individuals having rights over their own reproduction, that is, when and where reproduction occurs. The problem is that this resolution doesn't concern decisions made before reproduction takes place but afterwards. Another person has already entered into the equation and a full human being that will only change in form and in, not in nature until the day he or she dies. Um, please fund and support our adoption agencies, maternity homes, and pregnancy centers. Please promote adopt, um, resources for pregnant mothers and for families. Please incentivize pregnant-friendly schools and businesses and adopt policies that will support women whether or not they're pregnant. Please vo vote against this resolution. Thank you, Thank Ms. You. Farnsworth. <laughs> Betty Eckert. Ms. Eckert, you'll be followed by Philip Sevilla.
Well, I was going to give my time to someone to uh, speak to the Spanish people today, but nevertheless, they gave their time to somebody else, so I'm going to speak. I didn't plan to speak, but I'll tell you this. I cannot believe that this is on the agenda today. We have so many things going on in San Antonio, with food, nutrition, people doing without food, people doing without jobs. Who in the world does these agendas? Is it the mayor? Is it the city manager? Is it the city council? Do you do these agendas? This is something else. It shouldn't be on here, and yes, I am against this, this resolution, bringing things forward like this. Mayor Nuremberg, I cannot believe it. I cannot believe you. I cannot believe my councilman. I'm counting on some of you to have the understanding that things like this shouldn't even be a city council. Why are we doing this when there's so much more to be done that we're not Thank doing? You. Thank you, Ms. Eckert. Philip Sevilla. <laughs> Mr. Sevilla, you'll be followed by Amy O'Donnell. Good afternoon, city councilmen. I stand, I rise here on the occasion of this resolution opposing the resolution, this resolution, I strongly believe this resolution should never have seen the light of day. It sounds like a temper tantrum thrown by a first a freshman college student. But we're here, let's be more positive. I'd like to recommend an alternative, and you all have a copy that was laid at your desks uh, earlier before one o'clock. The title is Supporting the Preservation and Protection of All Human Life, and it goes on and on, but it's long, so I'll... By the way, um, Mrs. Harriet Manchaka cedes her time to me. Ms. Manchaka? Harriet Manchaka. All right, go ahead. You'll have three minutes total. I thought I had six. You have three minutes with her time to you, so you have three minutes. Go ahead. Whereas the members of the city council were elected to pass and enforce le local ordinances and rules for the benefit of the citizens of the San Antonio, consistent with the best interest of health, safety, and welfare of the general public, and whereas science recognizes the separate living being in a pregnant mother's womb whose heartbeat is detected as early as three weeks after fertilization and whose brain waves are detected as early as the 40, 43rd day from conception in, is human, and whereas science also recognizes that an unborn baby is capable of feeling pain as early as 20 weeks from conception, and whereas the Texas Heartbeat Act was signed into law and affirmed by the decision of the U.S. Supreme Court decision in the Robbs versus Jackson case on June 24, 2022. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of San Antonio, the City Council supports effort aimed at the protection and preservation of human life from the womb to natural death, including but not limited to, all city departments ensure state and federal statutes and codes are properly enforced with regards to the restrictions and regulations of surgical and chemical abortion. The city council supports and encourages the efforts of all organizations such as crisis pregnancy centers and adoption centers offering alternatives to abortion for mothers confronted with crisis pregnancies. Section three, the city council will strive to promote educational programs, especially for youth, which are consistent persons and in the best interest of their health, safety, and welfare, while acknowledging the fundamental and equal right to life of all preborn members of our human family. Finally, section four, the city council will properly supervise and monitor city law enforcement policies to ensure that all state and federal laws pertaining to the regulation in the state of Texas of surgical and chemical abortion products and services are absolutely and consistently adhered to. Finally, I want to remind all of you, and I, and I know I don't have to, 
that in an abortion procedure, there are two principles who walk in. One walks out alive, the other always is dead from that procedure. That is not healthcare, ladies and gentlemen. That is not healthcare. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sevilla. Amy O'Donnell. Ms. O'Donnell, you'll be followed by Joe Poseman. Hello, my name is Amy O'Donnell. I'm the Director of Communications at Texas Alliance for Life. I'm also a former resident of San Antonio who left here after I grew up in this city to go to Texas A&M where I put myself through school for a biomedical engineering degree to find out right before my last year that I was facing an unplanned pregnancy. Three months into marriage, I was on contraceptives. We know contraceptives can fail. We had one income, one car, a one-bedroom apartment at $20,000 a year. I had to face the decision of, of having my baby because my core belief didn't, um, my core belief at the time and as it still stands now is that women do not have to choose between their unplanned pregnancy and achieving great things. It's not an either or, it's an and both. We as women at any age can do great things and give birth to our babies planned or unplanned. The lie that women need abortion to compete academically, vocationally, or in any way has been perpetuated in our society for 50 years. Abortion has been held up as the answer to women's inequality in higher education, athletics, and the workplace. In Casey, three consecutive justices, three conservative justices erroneously said abortion was necessary to assure women's capacity to participate equally in the economic and social life of the nation. This position ignores two facts. First, a glance at history shows us that women's participation increased in political, social, athletic, and economic spheres of American life before Roe. Second, there is no consistent correlation between abortion and women's progress. I can't go into those stats now. I'm happy to send them. But the reality is women don't need abortion to advance in this country and I ask you to stop perpetuating the lie and insulting women by saying that Thank we you, have O'Donnell. to choose between having our babies planned or unplanned Joe and Pogeman. doing great things. Mr. Postman, you'll be followed by Sofia Sepulveda. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, my name is Dr. Joe Poyman. I'm executive director of Texas Alliance for Life. We ask you to not adopt this resolution. As the resolution describes, the Human Life Protection Act, House Bill 1280, completely protects unborn children from the tragedy of abortion beginning at conception, when the child comes into being. Under the definition of abortion in Texas law, Section 245002, Health and Safety Code, treatment for miscarriage and ectopic pregnancy are not abortions and cannot be prosecuted. That applies to House Bill 1280 and to every other abortion law in Texas. Under no circumstances can a woman on whom an abortion is performed be held criminally or civilly liable under House Bill 1280 or any other law in Texas. We believe that to categorically not prosecute offenders of this law is a dereliction of duty and leaves vulnerable women at risk. It is our understanding all three abortion facilities in San Antonio have ceased performing abortions indefinitely. There are no more licensed abortion facilities in this city. That is the new reality. The only abortion providers going forward will be those who perform illegal back alley abortions or desperate self induced abortions, abortions that carry significant risk to the health, safety, and very lives of women. By, being, by deprioritizing the investigation and prosecution of those who perform and assist these illegal back alley abortions, the council pay, puts women at terrible risk. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Poyman. Sofia Sepulveda, followed by Maricela Barrera. Good afternoon, City Council. I want to thank you for presenting the resolution and as someone who has fought for healthcare access for the last eight years, I'd like to say this is enough. This isn't enough. Let's be clear, abortion is healthcare. And this resolution is not enough. This resolution isn't a law and it's not enforceable and it's not protecting people. So we need to be bold in this resolution. So I request the City Council amend the proposed resolution to include language that explicitly directs law enforcement to the prioritize the investigation or support for the or the prosecution for any allegation charge of information relating to the outcome of a given pregnancy, including abortion and abortion-related care. We need to stop being coy and we need to stop listening to a small group of people who continue dictating people of color, and particularly women of color, what to do with our bodies. I, for one, am sick and tired of listening to colonizers trying to whitewash my indigenous history. White people, 
continually telling us people of color what to do with our hair, bodies, and, and erasing my language, my culture. I will not stand for them, and I will ask. These people want to protect life as long as it's white, cis, and heteronormative. Pass the resolution. Adopt Councilman McKee's amendment, and let's fight together to push for an ordinance that protects our people from seeking abortion. Thank you, Ms. Sepulveda, Maricela Ferreira, followed by Scarlett Pacheco. Good afternoon. I'm Maricela Barrera, proud resident of District 2. My soul is in District 5. My work frequently lies in District 1. Ni la tierra, ni las mujeres somos territorias de conquista. Ni la tierra, ni las mujeres somos territorias de conquista. I am here as a working class proud Chicana because many of my fellow working class Chicanas can't be here today because they are working. This resolution must be passed and I thank you in advance, each and every one of you, and I'm making eye contact with everybody here because I trust you will do the thing. And the thing is for San Antonio to be the leader in this, in this fight. I, run, I wore my running shoes today. Yes, I did. Why? Because it is a marathon I am here for. Ni la tierra, ni las mujeres somos territorias de conquista. Google it if you don't know Spanish. I have had an abortion, and I, and I am, and I am. Pass the red. Thank you, Ms. Beretta. Scarlett Pacheco, followed by Hernando Arce. Are you, Scarlett? Come on up, Scarlett. You'll be followed by Hernando Arce. Thank you, my name is Scarlett Pacheco. I'm a member of District 4, or a resident. Um, I wanna tell you a story about a woman who has served this community tirelessly as a nurse, taking care of children that are um, the most medically fragile children in this city, while herself also being medically fragile. She has a heart condition, asthma, among other conditions. So when she found out she was pregnant, unplanned pregnancy, she went to the doctor. They said, it's too much a risk. And despite all the risks, she said, I'm gonna bring this baby to term. And she did. And during the, during the uh, labor, the doctors traumatized her. And they didn't listen what she wanted. They gave her a C-section. They, they held her down and caused her heart to go into dysrhythmia. But the baby is fine, thank God. And she's, she's happy and healthy and seven months old now. But I worry about her future. If she becomes pregnant again, are we gonna force her to have another traumatizing event? Could, could she even go through that? Right now, she struggles. And I just want, I just want to thank this, the city for bringing this resolution. And I wanna make sure we protect women like her that are in a, in a fragile place. And it is not the government's place and it's not the doctor's place to say what she should do with her body. I ask you to also go further. I support, uh, an amendment um, that, that, please support the amendment Thank and you, I support the resolution. Fernando Arce. Mr. Arce, you'll be followed by Michael Samiego. Good afternoon, Council. I'm District 2. District 2. Uh, my, my name is Fernando Arce. I live on Natalin Street. And I'd like to start off with a prayer for those of you who's behind me. Can pray along with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed by thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against the folks, of folks again. babies in a woman's womb. And lead us not into temptation of murder of the unborn baby, but deliver us from this evil practice of abortion in San Antonio, Texas, 2022. President Donald J. Trump slogan was make America great. But I'm standing here to tell every one of you and everyone in this crowd today that America will never be great again until America becomes godly again. We have lost our ways, ladies and gentlemen. We have blinded ourselves. We have fallen asleep. We are a Christian Judeo nation Folks, again, please. We are a Christian Judeo nation, ladies and gentlemen. And you need to stop and turn back to God because you will regret this. Repent. God loves you. Jesus loves you. And amen. Thank you, Mr. R.C. Michael Samaniego. Michael Samaniego. Shanina Delphine. Shanina Delphine, Gina Kramer. Are you Ms. Kramer? Are you Ms. Delphine? Okay, come on up. You'll be followed by Gina Kramer. Okay. Hello, I grew up in District 4. I work in District 6 and I reside in District 1. I implore you to vote yes to the resolution. Abortion is healthcare and it is life-saving. I have a good friend from college who I will not name out of protection. In March 2020, after the major COVID lockdown hit, we both were reeling at the reality that we were in our final semester and the graduation we had worked so hard for would simply not take place, not in the way we spent over a decade dreaming of. Then my friend faced an even greater challenge. She was unexpectedly pregnant and she went from zero weeks pregnant to four weeks pregnant in only a three minute time span. That's how long the test takes. What was she to do? She grew up in church and never imagined she would face this situation. Her body was changing and she didn't recognize herself anymore. It caused severe depression and anxiety for her on top of the losses the pandemic caused. She knew she didn't have the family support or the finances to care for another human. Who knew if she would land a job that year or with the economy completely shut down, she could barely take care of herself and she was suicidal several times that past year. Her mother was never around to love and provide for her because she was always working and she didn't want that for another person. She made up her mind given her experiences and I, trusted, I trust her to make that decision. Please trust your citizens to make those choices for themselves. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Delphine. Gina Kramer. Ms. Kramer, you'll be followed by Dianira Aluko. Hello, my name is Gina Kramer and I'm a resident of District 1. I am here today to speak in support of this resolution and the city council members and staff uh, who drafted it. I'm also here standing in solidarity with the community who have come together to protect the people of San Antonio and our individual rights to health care. Abortion is health care. Pregnant people deserve access to the full spectrum of care, and that includes abortion. Statistically speaking, every person in this room knows someone and loves someone who has had an abortion. Abortion is not something that should cause shame or stigma. It is health care. Criminalizing abortion access is a moral issue. There's already major gaps in access to care, and we, San Antonio should do everything in its power to expand access and medical privacy and that goes for abortion seekers as well. We've already seen the harm that abortion criminalization can cause. I think of Lizelle Herrera, a 26-year-old woman in the Valley who was wrongfully arrested for her pregnancy outcome. A HIPAA violation led to her arrest for a crime she did not commit. With the overturning of Roe, many others fear something similar could happen to them. It is my hope that San Antonio will follow along with other Texas cities in protecting abortion access by reducing enforcement efforts. I'm calling on our elected officials and our mayor to take the first step in protecting all abortion seekers. Please stand behind this resolution. It does not violate state law, 
and we need to protect the right of San Antonio residents to make reproductive health decisions, including abortion. Thank you, Ms. Kramer. Deanira Aluko. Deanira Aluko. Anakwa Ariano Garcia. Ms. Garcia will be followed by Xander Gukian. Hello, thank you for having me. My name is Anakwa Ariana Garcia with Southwest Workers Union in District 2. Hello, Councilman. I bring the voice of our low-income community members and youth group, many of which are of birthing age. We support the City of San Antonio for speaking out for citizens' fundamental right to reproductive health care. And we want to ensure that the efforts being made with this reproductive rights resolution has an effect, are as effective as possible. This is why we urge City Council to include language in the resolution directing the City of San Antonio Police Department to make using city resources to investigate or seek to arrest individuals exercising their reproductive rights the lowest possible priority. City Council members have an obligation to protect your constituents the best way you can. And that is on behalf, I'm sorry, and it has to be said, the people who are in opposition, who think that God is speaking to them and directing them to stand up against human rights, the reality is that the voice inside your head that is speaking to you is not God, it's white supremacy. <laughs> Del delusions and white supremacy have no place in our city and on the dais. To city council, God has no place in your decision making. Please focus on reality and on the people living and breathing in San Antonio who need protections from white supremacy and delusions. We need you to pass bold resolutions for the body autonomy of the people and the land that we live on. Thank you. Thank you. Xander Gukian. Mr. Gukian, you'll be followed by Elizabeth Alvarez. Howdy, guys. Uh, Xander Gukian, District 9. And Mr. Mayor, I uh, used to go to Olympic gym. I did, uh, I did too back in the day. So I stand before you guys today in opposition to the proposed resolution. I'm not going to debate abortion with you, but I am going to talk about the Constitution. Regardless of what your stance on abortion is, whether you're pro-life, whether you're pro-choice, this resolution was written with the intent to circumvent the legislative process. Recognizing and endorsing District Attorney Joe Gonzalez's efforts to not prosecute abortions is wrong. It's un-American. We have a Constitution that each of you guys up here swore to uphold and to defend. Abortion is not protected by the Constitution, nor is it by Texas state law. If you continue to pick and choose which laws the people of San Antonio are bound to, the legislative process will lose its value and will effectively fall into a state of anarchy. We are a republic, and you guys are meant to represent us, not to subvert the process of representation for your own agenda. Thank you, guys. God bless you. Thank you, Mr. Gukian. Elizabeth Alvarez followed by Dave McCall. Hi, you can call me Bet. I'm from District 2. Um, I learned at a young age that education would be my freedom. As a full-time college student, I worked two jobs, and yet that was the freest I had ever been in my life. My future was in my hands. I had the opportunity to change not only my life, but my family's life and my community. I could give back everything I learned. While I was still in college, I realized I was pregnant and reality set in quickly. I would have to quit school and I would lose my scholarship and I would have to pay back my loans immediately. I would lose the health insurance that I had through my school. And I didn't have transportation because my life revolved around my campus. I was a very active student. I would be right back where I started before leaving my hometown, stuck and unable to progress financially. I, still a child, was considering if I was ready to start a family. After weighing my options, I decided to make the best decision I could, and that was to have an abortion. It was not a light decision, and for several years, I did wonder what would have been had I decided to bring the pregnancy to term. But not once in the 10 years since I chose this path for myself have I regretted it. I stand before you in gratitude that I had the option to take an active role in the way I wanted my life to look for me, and I have been able to dedicate my life to supporting my community. This resolution is a short step, but it does not do enough. We seeking agency in our healthcare are being hunted, and you must do more to protect our community from the cycles of generational poverty. 
I request the City Council amend the proposed resolution to include language that explicitly deprioritizes the investigation or support for the prosecution of any charge related to abortion. Thank you, Ms. Alvarez. <laughs> Dave McCall. You, Mr. McCall. What's your name? One second. Natalie Smith. Okay. We got you. You'll have three minutes, Mr. McCall. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your attention. These are tough days. These are confusing times that we, we live in. There's one thing that I am very, very encouraged by and that you should be encouraged by, and that is that every single one of you as councilmen, councilwomen, mayor, that your mothers were intelligent enough to not see you as a worthless blob of tissue and that they were all pro-life. And that I would say every one of your mothers were pro-life. Mr. McCall, you're addressing the council. Thank you. Go ahead. And I would, I would say that. All right, pause the time. Folks, I'm going to recess us for five minutes. We'll be back in five minutes. The council will recess into the back room. Mr. McCall, you'll get your time back in just a moment. Thank you. Council is now resuming from recess. I would like to just remind all of us who are here to speak today that we are all here under the same rules, one of which I think all of us need to make sure we respect is the right of people to go ahead and speak, to be heard according to our Constitution and the First Amendment. If there is someone that you do not agree with and you do not want to hear them, you are free to step out, but please do not interrupt any speaker so no one will interrupt somebody that you want to hear. We'll go ahead and go back to uh, the speaker we left off with. I believe that was Mr. McCall. Dave McCall, you have the floor. You have a minute and a half, Mr. McCall. No, I have. Uh, she I take that back. Yes, you were already given. Uh, the other lady's time, so we're going to give you that three minutes. Go ahead. There's a lot of confusion in our day and time, but there is one thing that there is no confusion about. There has never been a woman in the history of mankind that has ever given birth to a dog or a cat. The day that a woman gives birth to a dog or cat, I will entertain the other side. That is a human. It is one thing, and there is a heartbeat at three to four weeks that can be detected. In 1863, prior to the Emancipation Proclamation, a black man was declared not to be a human, and it was the law of the land. Who among us today would possibly have the audacity to think that today? It was the law of the land, and it was changed. All of you are councilmen, councilwomen, Another name is Alderman. Another name prior to that was Fathers of the City, City Fathers. You have the responsibility to protect us and to protect all life. Amen. In 1945, there were the Nuremberg trials. Today, it feels like the Nuremberg denials. We are denying that there is human life in a womb. How can we do that? Every one of your mothers were pro-life. Every one of your mothers cared about you. Every one of your mothers were smart enough to say, this is not a blob of tissue, this is a life within me. You have the responsibility to uphold the law for all citizens, for all life, for life in the womb. 50% of the women or, or more of the babies in the womb are women. What about their rights? This is not a dog or a cat. You are either going to be just like the Nuremberg trials where the, where the Nazis did not value life and thought it was just fine, and, and the Nazis were prosecuted, many of them killed because of it, because they, of what they did to the Jews. Or you're going to be fathers, patriots, and leaders of our city that is going to say, regardless I am going to stand for life, life in the womb, for all people, not just those who I think are convenient or not convenient. There are resources beyond imagination to all women, 
to help them today. The choice is in the bedroom. That's where the choice is for all women, is in the bedroom. And birth control that has been given to all. What about the tolerance? Tolerance for all to speak. My prayer for you as council men and women is that you will do the right thing before God. If you can prove to me the first woman in history that has not given birth to a human, I will listen to your side. But because of that, we have a responsibility to stand for life. Okay. The next speaker, Michelle Gonzalez, followed by Pam Gordon. Michelle Gonzalez. Um, no, I, I don't think. Oh, here's Ms. Gonzalez. I'm sorry. Followed by Pam Gordon. Thank you. Go ahead, Ms. Gonzalez. So, um, Michael Samaniego is yielding his time to me as well, please. What's your name again, Michael? Michael Samaniego. What's your sign up? Okay. Did you find that? What was that? We're just making sure that you had signed up for your time. Okay. So you will have three minutes. Okay, thank you. Hello, council members. Thank you for your time. Um, well, here we are voicing our concerns about the strong desire that many here have to shed innocent blood in the womb. It's very, very disheartening that abortion is presented as a solution to a problem, which is a baby. In reality, the solution causes problems that aren't mentioned at the time that the solution is presented. You have women who suffer from psychological effects like depression, suicidal ideation, drug addiction, and so on. Also, the physical effects of, and possibility of death at the time of the abortion. Sadly, murder, murder in the womb has just become another form of birth control. It promotes promiscuous behavior and lack of accountability. Instead of focusing on future abortions, how about we focus on future responsibilities? What a depraved society we have become when we have failed to protect the most innocent of lives in the womb. We, have, we are hearing a lot about racism and protecting people of color, but yet abortions kill, kill more black babies than any white supremacist ever will, or any police officer for that matter. We're talking about our body, our choice, but in reality, it's a body within a body. After all, has anyone ever delivered an arm or a leg? People here, along with Councilwoman Terry Castile, propose this resolution under the guise of protecting the liberties of its people. Well, don't all babies have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness? The overturning of Roe versus Wade was long overdue when you consider that McCarvey or Roe never even received an abortion and she was a pro-life activist until her death. I pray that when you decide on this resolution that you will consider that you were all a clump of cells, that you were all in your mother's wombs waiting to take that first breath. Everyone talks about choice, choice, choice. Well, shouldn't babies in the wombs have a choice? I'm sure they would choose to live. You can choose life for them today. And in, in fi in fin <laughs> finally, in Re Ronald Reagan's words, I noticed that everyone who is for abortion has already been born. Hashtag baby lives matter, hashtag abolish abortion. Thank you, God bless you, and the demons in the room. Next, Pam Gordon, followed by Veronica Granado. Pam Gordon. Hi, I'm Pam Gordon, a resident of San Antonio, and I'm here today to adamantly oppose the resolution to label abortion as health care. Taking a quote from a letter sent from our own Archbishop Gustavo of San Antonio, Following the recent congressional passage of the deceptively named Women's Health Care Protection Act, the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops states that, I quote, simply repeating the mantra that abortion is health care doesn't make it so. Deliberately ending the lives of defenseless and voiceless human beings is the antithesis of health care, unquote. Abortion is not health care. Abortion stops one heart and breaks another. Abortion is the brutal murder of an innocent, helpless baby. We must love and provide for both the mothers and their babies. Each of you was once that voiceless baby in your mother's womb, 
And thanks be to God that your mother chose life. Because here you are in this critical time where you can decide to help other mothers choose life. Indeed, let San Antonio become a sanctuary city for the unborn. Choose life, not death, for our city where our citizens know that their lives matter. Your life matters. Every life matters, including the unborn lives. Loving St. Anthony, patron of our city, help this city council to find the courage in their hearts to defend life and reject this resolution. As the city council, you are now faced with this life-altering decision. Deuteronomy 30:19. I set before you the blessing and the curse, life and death. Choose life. Veronica Granado, followed by Marissa Lucero. Um, hi, my name is Veronica. I'm an abortion storyteller, a student, and I'm here to speak in support of this resolution on behalf of the, of the Lilith Fund. I had an abortion when I was 17. At the time, I had plans to become an engineer and study at the University of Texas at San Antonio, where I was accepted into. I knew that I needed to. I knew that I would have needed to put off college for the distant, undetermined future in order to support a child that I was in no shape or form capable of supporting. My partner and I had no job and no mon money saved, living with our parents at the time. Because I knew I wasn't ready to become a parent at 17, I decided that abortion was the very best option for me. I had to go through a lengthy and difficult judicial bypass process in order to be able to get an abortion without involving my parents because I was a minor and Texas law states that I, need, I needed parental consent because I wasn't mature enough to make my own decisions. The process made me feel as if I was a criminal for seeking a medical procedure that would have saved me from a pregnancy that I didn't want and a pregnancy that would have prevented me from getting the better life that I had worked hard up until that point to obtain. Now, five years later, I am soon to graduate from UTSA with my engineering degree. My abortion was the most mature and best decision I've ever made in my life, and I reflect on the difficulty of getting an abortion through the judicial bypass process and understand firsthand how much more difficult and scary it would have been to get an abortion as a minor right now. And with this resolution, it would, have helped, it would help other minors in similar situations that I was in to be able to access health care without fear of criminalization. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Marisa Lucero. Hi, my name is Marisa Lucero, and I'm advocating you vote against this resolution because it promotes a criminal offense. Section 1 explicitly says the city of San Antonio, quote, affirms its commitment to protecting the right of its residents to make reproductive health decisions, including abortion, unquote, and abortion is a criminal offense. This will make you vulnerable to charges of malicious intent and gross negligence in committing a criminal offense. All passions aside, this isn't legal. That is all. Thank you, Ms. Lucero. Chantel Diaz. Diaz, you'll be followed by Anastasia Bernstein. Hello. I am here today because I support this resolution. I believe abortion is health care, and I believe no one has the right to tell another individual what to do with their body. For me, it is more than having access to abortion. It is about women's rights. It is about LGBTQIA plus rights, about basic human rights. For me, it is about the struggle of being underestimated, not only because of my race, but because of my gender as well. It is about painfully knowing that I'm being treated as a second-class citizen simply for having more estrogen levels and pigmentation on my skin. And I can stand up here and give you a, a list of reasons why I am for this movement, but instead, I will leave you with this analogy. The more we harm and take advantage of Mother Earth, the more she will attack us and bless us with the hurricane, per se. However, if we flow with her, she may surprise us with the gentle breeze that caresses our skin. If we allow her to breathe, rest, and cooperate with her instead of against her, she'll provide shade to protect us from the strong UV rays of the sun, along with other meaningful resources we take for granted from Mother Earth. Even though we may not speak the same language, she is communicating with us. We must learn her ways of expression and interpret what she is trying to tell us. We can't extract all the water out of her and not expect her to go dry. 
or contaminate her atmosphere and then wonder why we get sick. Mother Earth is only a reflection of what we are doing to her. If we help heal Mother Earth, she won't feel the need to react. Instead, she will learn how to respond in a healthy manner as long as her boundaries are respected. Thank you, Ms. Or Lucero. Or she will have no problem without... Chantel Diaz. Thank you, Ms. Lucero. Chantel Diaz. Are you Ms. Diaz? Come on up. Oh, I'm sorry. You were Chantel. I'm sorry. Anastasia Bernstein. Apologize. Melina Espiritu Ozakar. Azokar is next. My name, my name is Anastasia Bernstein, and I have a dear friend with a respiratory genetic disease called cystic fibrosis. It's mainly respiratory, but it affects her entire body in complete. It affects your entire body in completely different ways from patient to patient. The current life expectancy of a cystic fibrosis patient is 53 years, and that is only because of the incredible steps made in modern medicine. If she were put into a position where she would be expected to carry a, an unexpected pregnancy, her health would be put into risk immediately. Men with cystic fibrosis are typically sterile, but many women have extreme, re extreme reproductive problems. She has been to the hospital almost annually for menstrual cramps. I refuse to risk her life. I believe that our rights are to protect the health of our body and should be unquestioned. Please support this resolution. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Bernstein. Melina Espiritu Azokar. Melina Espiritu Azokar. All right. Aisha Malik. Ms. Malik, you'll be followed by Karen Munoz. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Did that make anybody uncomfortable? Because it should have, because God does not belong in this government building right here. Okay. So I am here to talk about the, the law here that we have. The, this resolution is not about increasing access to ab abortion at all. This is about making it a low priority for the city not to waste resources on prosecuting doctors. So, you know, um, they're talking about how it's just prosecuting doctors involved. What we also have in play here is not just House Bill 1280, it's also SB 8. SB 8, it, it, it made incre incredible civil liability um, be able to be imposed on anyone aiding or abetting an abortion up to $10,000 um, for the same abortion. Anybody can sue you, a friend, a rapist can sue the person, a rapist friend can sue the person who had an abortion under SB 8, for example. Okay, but that said, Abortion is health care. HB 1280 does define it that. You know, it, it talks about medical emergencies, and that's that. Um, and so you should support this resolution because it, it will lead to a, uh, a law enforcement agencies to, dis to disclose your protected health information. Thank you, Ms. Malik. Karen Munoz. Ms. Munoz, you'll be followed by Rick Trevino. Hi, my name is Karen Munoz. I'm a resident of D7 and also a recent graduate from St. Mary's Law. Um, I'm here to speak in support of this resolution. I'm really proud of you all for introducing it, and I hope that you all pass it. Um, beyond that, there's nothing that I can say today, nothing more important than the abortion stories that people have shared. And I really appreciate everyone sharing those. Um, it's none of our business, and they still came up here and shared those with you guys. Um, I do want to dispel a couple things, however. As I just said, I just graduated from St. Mary's School of Law, which is obviously a Catholic school. But still, at that school, I learned that the separation of church and sting is a thing, right? That's not, it's not written in the Constitution that we should abide by, that we should be up here even praying um, in the middle of public comments in this way. Um, I'd also like to, secondly, there's been a lot of talk about how failing to prosecute and not following the law is like a dereliction of people's duties, but that's actually not true either. Obviously, the district attorney is elected and he has discretion, and he currently doesn't even prosecute, he declines to prosecute for marijuana cases, which is an example of you know, him being able to 
exercise that discretion. Um, third, there's been talk that you guys should use the legislative process. And one, um, I know in this resolution, there is a line about how we are going to, if this passes, we're going to go and advocate. We're going to have our lobbyists go and say, hey, these, we don't support these kinds of bills. So that's a good thing. And then also, um, the strong majority, if I'm correct, of the Bear County delegation, like House reps and Senate members, are actually Democrats and do not support any of the anti-abortion bills that have been passed at the state level. So it follows then that you all passing this resolution is actually in support with everything that Bear County voters want. Um, again, I really am proud of you all for passing this. Hopefully you do. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Munoz. Rick Trevino, followed by Sylvia Villarreal. Hello. Um, this is truly a retrograde moment in our society. I'm here to speak in support of the GRACE Act. I can't say anything that hasn't been said. I'm a man and have it easy in this country. So I wanna take some time to get some things off my chest. First, regarding the Dobbs decision, nothing in law or society has changed. All that changed was the number of conservative justices on the court. It was an obscene demonstration of political power. So I'm glad to see my city attempt, attempt the same. We got more votes than them Plain and simple. Doesn't feel too nice, right guys? <laughs> Secondly, I want to comment on the awful state of affairs for women's rights. Jim Bopp, the lead attorney of the Right to Life movement, said of the 10-year-old girl in Ohio that was raped, quote, she would have had to have the baby. And, ha and as many women would have had babies as a result of rape, we would hope that she would understand the reason, ultimately, that and the benefits of having a child. These folks don't see the woman in the situation. And from what I'm hearing, a woman in that situation actually should want to die. I think it's absolutely abhorrent what they represent. And I'm really proud of you guys for standing up to them. Thank you, Mr. Trevino. Sylvia Villarreal. Sylvia Villarreal. Ashley Sosa. Ashley Sosa. Ms. Sosa, you'll be followed by Amy O. O U. Ms. Varriel, is that you? Are you Sylvia Varriel? No, Ashley Sosa. Oh, I'm sorry. Ms. Sosa. Go ahead, Ms. Sosa. Are you? I'm Ashley Sosa. Go ahead, Ms. Sosa. Gracias. Buenos dias. My name is Ashley Sosa, and I'm speaking against item one. I am a first generation Mexican American, being the youngest of four siblings. I saw my parents struggling to give us the life they never had in Mexico. Despite them struggling in every way imaginable, emotional, physical, economical, my parents became, became successful and still carried the weight of providing while having four kids. But because of their four children, they wanted better for us, so they did better. With no one to help them, they made it out of those hard times. Abortion has never been a part of my story, but my mother had the choice to abort me or give birth to me at 26 weeks. My mother chose life. I stand here today as the first in my family to graduate from college and hold a bachelor's degree in communications from Texas A&M University, San Antonio. We need to construct a community where we reach out to our women and help provide alternatives to abortion and encourage our woman, even if the father of that, children, that child isn't present throughout the baby's childhood. She could still succeed. Let's stop lying to our woman and instead give her those resources that allow her to provide for her baby and become the person she always wanted to be. If we don't provide alternatives to abortion in our communities, how can we expect a whole country to do that? We, San Antonio, we must lead by example. I ask that you Thank you, Ms. Sosa. I ask that y'all vote against this resolution. Thank you, Ms. Sosa. Amy O. Followed by Emma Hernandez. Good afternoon. This is Amy. Um, I, th this problem is not really 
an abortion problem. It is as simple as one plus one. Whether you believe in God or not, you believe in the Big Bang, or you believe in God who created us all. Either way, the most basic education that we know of is reproductive system created by a man and a woman, and with the two equals three, which is the baby. Why would the baby be at fault at what the one and two have done? And if anybody wants to think that it is not their responsibility that they have a, a baby at hand, they need to think about how they created this baby. It was sex. We all know that. It's a, such a basic information and knowledge. Why do they not want to take responsibility of what they have recreated? If they created that, they need to take responsibility. And taxpayers should not be paying for some irresponsible action that they've done behind the doors. Okay, that is $500,000, $500 million that Planned Parenthood gets from us, from taxpayers. I don't agree with it, I, couldn't, I don't condone to it. Why do I have to pay for it? Yes, our tax dollars go into that. And just to let you all know, I do not agree with this. Thank, Thank you, you, Ms. Al. Emma Hernandez, followed by Nokita Moore. Hello. Uh, Joe Thrawn has ceded his time to me. What's your name? Joe Thrawn. Joe, T-H-R-O-N. OK, got it. Thank you. Go ahead. You have three minutes. Awesome. Hello, my name is Emma Hernandez. I speak to you today as a San Antonio resident, a proud District 1 homeowner, and a person who has had abortions. Last year, under the consult of my physician, I began a medication regimen that, while beneficial to my health, is also known to cause fetal anomalies. Thus, it was specifically paired with a hormonal birth control, which I took diligently and as prescribed. I made this decision with confidence, as I knew my health care goals and I was under the guidance of my doctor. The last thing on my mind were Texas legislators, nor their opinion on what I chose to do with my body. Nevertheless, in February of this year, I discovered that I was pregnant. At that time, I was already working a full-time job, a part-time job, and completing my graduate studies at UTSA. Starting a family was not in my or my partner's plans, especially knowing that the probability of a healthy pregnancy was not in our favor. I immediately called my local Planned Parenthood clinic, which had offered me competent and compassionate care in the past. I intended to request a medication abortion, as I knew it to be a safe and effective method. It's just one mifepristone and four misoprostol pills taken under the tongue 24 hours later. However, in a brief phone conversation, I was informed that I was likely already past the six-week limit and would not be able to seek abortion care in the state of Texas. In the six months since SB 8 had been enacted, nothing had changed in the safety or efficacy in the abortion care I required, but I now found myself pregnant and seeking not to be under a criminalized context. I was referred to a clinic in New Mexico and left alone to navigate the maze that is abortion care in this country. The reality is that many people like me who are unable to receive care from a provider in their community will also be unable to shoulder the financial and logistical burden of traveling out of state for care. But despite the barriers to access, I was able to terminate that pregnancy. I knew my options, but what about those who don't? I was lucky enough to have an employer who allowed me paid time off and who sent me flowers on the day of my abortion. My partner held my hand and remained by my side as I began sharing my abortion story publicly. Based on my experience, I am often asked if I intend to relocate from Texas, especially after Roe v. Wade was overturned. But I love San Antonio and I won't abandon its residents and I hope you do not abandon us either. Words matter. Anti-abortion hate matters. They harm someone you love deeply. Everyone here loves someone who has had an abortion, and I hope that you stand alongside us and support this resolution and make it just the first step in assuring our abortion access. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Moore. Gloria Lee.
Gloria Lee, Alice, Ms. Lee, Oh, I'm sorry. Um, thank you, Ms. Hernandez. You know Kita Moore? Yes. Yeah. Uh, you'll be followed by Gloria Lee. She's okay, right behind great. me. According to the status of poverty in San Antonio, which was found on sanantonio.gov portal, San Antonio has been the poorest major city in the nation since 2013. One in five people struggle through the effects of poverty. San Antonio is also one of the most economically segregated cities in the nation, meaning some of y'all have never been hungry enough to hunt and cannot relate to some of these struggles. The easiest way to prevent generational poverty is preventing unexpected pregnancy. But if caring about life is the ultimate goal, what about my mother's life? What about my brother's life? What about AJ Hernandez's life? What about Charles Roundtree Chop's life? What about Marquise's Joan life? What about the folks on the street hungry? What about this economic divide? What about my life? I stand before you as someone who is able to create a galaxy of cells inside of my body. However, I'm terrified to do so. I'm terrified because of, of oppressive legislation that the city council and some other clowns are perpetuating. I don't want my kids to stand here in this same spot and fight the same things that I've been fighting, the same, thing, same things that my mother has fought and the same thing that her mother has fought. I support the Grace Act and I request the city, the, I re I request the city council amend the proposed resolution to include language that explicitly deprioritizes the investigation or support of the prosecution of any allegation, charge, or information relating to the outcome of a giving pregnancy, including abortion and abortion-related care. Thank you, Ms. Moore. <laughs> Gloria Lee. Ms. Lee, you'll be followed by Alice Canestaro Garcia. Okay, I came up in District 2. I live in District 7. I have five kids, no abortions. But when I was coming up, there wasn't much information shared. There is now. We did not receive any sex education, especially as a youth going through the foster system. No one was watching out for us. When I first found out I was pregnant, I was 14. Then again at 16. I didn't consider that was a choice at all. Had I known better, I would have able to know what to do. I had not received sex education, I would have not be able to protect my, myself and my body. And had I had an abortion, I would probably access to an abortion, I would probably would not have my first two. As that being said, women should have the right to take care of their own body. Me at the age of 14, what a baby, at the age of 16, with a baby, I was out there struggling every day. Every day, I, it was a struggle for me. So with this being said, the system does not have a right to tell us to do with our bodies. Our bodies are choice. I request that the city councilman and men propose resolution includes language that explicitly does not use. Thank you, Ms. Lee. <laughs> Alice Canestaro Garcia followed by Roger Cirillo. Hello, I'm from District 1. My name is Alice Canestero Garcia. I'm a, finally a full-time working artist. I am concerned about the trauma in here, inherent in this um, uh, Grace Act. It, it's a good act. I support it. But just the idea that some police people, I respect their work very much, but it's traumatic talking to police. So I very much appreciate that the idea of giving the lowest priority to any of us, well, I have, I'm a child of the 70s, so I supported my community with rides to clinics and moral support and that if I were to do that without the protection of the Grace uh, Resolution, it really needs to be an ordinance. I'll get to that in a second. But 
without the protection of this ordinance, I mean, resolution, just helping people would put me in danger. So, uh, if I may say, I survived three live births. Uh, please be aware, especially you guys, that pregnancy is uh, much more dangerous than Thank abortion. Thank you, Mr. Canastara Garcia. Roger Cirillo. Mr. Cirillo, you'll be followed by Jerry Sharp. All right. <laughs> That's not my real name. I try to sit down in this area and they're like, oh, gross, the patriarchy's here. And I was like, whoa, whoa, I changed my name. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, I apologize, you can sit here. So I was like, apparently people hate God and white people for something, am I right, guys? Like, I don't know what it is, they hate, they get so flustered. Where are the adults? Okay, let me start. Uh, I wanna thank all you, you know, what you, I'm gonna go off the cuff freestyle. Okay, so guys, come on. Where are the adults with the clap, the, the snapping, I can't snap my fingers, but the snapping and then the, the this and that, you can tell by the dress who votes for what. You could be like, I know what you're gonna say. Like, where are the adults? Come on, guys. Natural law, forget religion, right? Put that to the side. Natural law, Aristotle, the philosophers, the Greeks, all of them. Natural law says you can define humans by structures or functions. You know who did that? I'm gonna say the word, ready? Look, they're gonna love this. Nazis did that. <laughs> oh, I thought I was gonna get some, okay. Nazis did that. Do not define human beings by their functions, what they can contribute to society. Actually, you need to define them by their structure, the nature, we forgot essence. Guys, come on, nobody, I could tell, but listening, nobody's taking a philosophy class. Nature, the nature, what is it, the what is it? It is a human being. What are the unborn, that's it. What are the unborn, and two, when is it okay to directly intentionally kill an innocent human life. Some guy's not looking up, but look, all right, everybody here, y'all need to listen. Uh, Faith, Reason, and Geekdom podcast. Uh, I could debate thank, anybody. Thank you, Mr. Cirillo. Jerry Sharp. Mr. Sharp, you'll be followed by Danny Petrie. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and members of the council. My name is Jerry Sharp III, and I'm a public policy analyst for Texas Alliance for Life. We're located in Austin. Uh, we ask you to not adopt this resolution before you. Uh, in 2021, the Texas legislature appropriated vast funds to assist low-income women, especially women with unplanned pregnancies. The legislature appropriated $100 million for the current two-year budget towards the highly successful Alternatives to Abortion program. That program provides services for women facing unplanned pregnancies to assist them in carrying the baby to term, giving birth, keeping or placing that baby for adoption. Support is available for at least three years after birth from nearly 200 plus pregnancy centers in Texas, maternity homes included, and adoption agencies across the state, serving, over, uh, serving close to 150,000 clients each year, far more than the 55,000 abortions in Texas in 2020 alone. For uninsured pregnant women with incomes of up to double the federal poverty level, the state's Medicaid program pays for prenatal, childbirth, and follow-up care for the mothers for six months and babies for 12 months. The Texas Medicaid program pays for more than half of all the births in Texas, um, covering nearly $1.2 billion of coverage per year. More than 80% of pregnant women in Texas give birth to their children. In the wake of the Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe v. Wade, Surely that percentage will increase, and surely this council should change its priorities to help those women with childbirth and not encourage illegal abortions. Thank, Thank you. you, Mr. Sharp. Danny Petrie, followed by Janice Tapp. I'm from District 1. Uh, good afternoon. And to all you critical thinkers, the Declaration of Independence states that we have only three inalienable rights the right to life, and in this order, liberty, which is freedom, and the pursuit of happiness. Freedom is not the same as license, the ability to do whatever you want. Freedom is the ability to choose the, the good, what you ought to do. There are no other rights, do you hear me? There are no other rights without the great responsibility that accompanies freedom. Everything you call a right is really not a right unless there is responsible citizenship. Think about it. 
freedom of speech, freedom to bear arms, freedom of the press, everything you call a right is really not a right unless there is responsible citizenship. If you negate responsibility, then anything can be a right. You call health care access a right, a right to do what? To pursue care. Do you have a right to force a doctor to see you? No. No one has the right to kill an unborn baby. Amen. This resolution is a bunch of half-truths and a disregard for the law. It is a document of false premises, and it promotes a culture of selfishness. That's what this does. Thank Do you, Mr. Do not vote Petrie. for this resolution. Janice Tapp. Janice Tapp. Wanda Longoria. Wanda Longoria. Yaneth Flores. Ms. Flores, you'll be followed by Aaron Aguayo. Um, thank you, Councilwoman Castillo, for putting this on um, today's special session. Um, thank you to all the abortion storytellers who have spoken today. Um, I want to quickly remind folks in the room, many whom are just so odd, um, abortion is a tale as old as time. Uh, and I want to name my great, great grandmother, Guadalupe Mendoza, partera in rural Texas, rural Mexico, providing abortion care and birthing people, a legacy that I am so proud to carry for her labor was a labor of love. I'm here asking you to deprioritize de the enforcement of laws that criminalize abortion and abortion-related care. Give direction to your law enforcement and ensure San Antonio residents feel safe in seeking health care. Provide adequate funds to provide education clearly needed, and access to information regarding repro health care and ways to receive financial um, care. Also want um, to ask you to examine the activities of crisis pregnancy centers in order to protect residents from false, misleading, and incredibly harmful information. Also asking you to explore what housing and employment protection can look like for those who might experience discrimination due to their repro health choices. As you can see, we have some fucking haters in the house, and y'all definitely discriminate. Thank you, Ms. Flores. Aaron Aguayo. Aaron Aguayo. Leslie Casillas. Leslie Casillas. Ion McGinty. Ion McGinty. Go ahead. You have three minutes. I called you, sir. You didn't come up. Oh, I was letting her in so I could come out. Okay, I'll call you again. Ms. McGinty, go ahead. Oh, me again. Yeah. Okay, good afternoon. Jesus said, I came to give life and life more abundantly. The devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. I want to ask, why are y'all being devils? Why are y'all doing the work of the devil and being so obsessed with killing babies? I was in elementary school in 1973 when Roe v. Wade passed, and all I've seen is the degradation of our society since. I'm the proud mother of six kids, and I have six in heaven. Abortion is not health care. It's a racist industry started by Margaret Sanger to kill blacks and people with special needs. Abortions always kill a baby and sometimes the mother. Who wrote this resolution? Was it the Planned Parent lobbyist? It sure is full of lies. Abortions are different than miscarriages. How many of y'all have watched a video of an actual abortion? Do you know what the abortionist does? He has to stick an instrument in and grab every limb. And then that instrument has to crush the skull of the baby. They know this is accomplished when white fluid comes out of the woman 
That's the, that's the brain fluid. Please vote for life and protect women. Thank you, Ms. McGinty. Lori Stockteel. Lori Stockteel. You'll be followed by Aaron Agoyo. Hello, thank you for allowing me to address the council today. My name is Lori Stockstill, and I am the president of the National Council of Jewish Women in San Antonio, and I am representing over 400 of our members and advocates here in San Antonio. Um, I'll have an opportunity to present the uh, Jewish view on this, that there were so many Christian um, views. Abortion bans impede our religious freedom Restrictive abortion laws rooted in specific Christian understanding of when life begins and that do not reflect Jewish tradition and thinking limits my ability to fully practice my religious tradition. <laughs> Jewish law is very clear on this issue. Abortion is not only permitted in Judaism, but in some cases it's required when the life of the pregnant person is at stake. Forcing people to stay pregnant and give birth against their will goes against all of our traditions, teachings, about the critical importance of both physical and mental health. Thank you for giving me this opportunity, and I hope that you will pass this resolution. Thank you, Ms. Stocktio. Aaron Aguayo. Mr. Aguayo, you'll be followed by Sylvia Villarreal. Good afternoon, uh, my name is Aaron Arguello. I am a District 1 resident, um, and I am the Bear County Senior Advocacy Organizer at Move Texas, which is a nonpartisan nonprofit building power in youth communities. Um, and around the state, the fight for abortion protection is being led by young people, uh, from groups like Buckle Bunnies here locally, to the council member who introduced this resolution. Um, we are an organization run by young people for young people, uh, with many staff members who have previously worked in abortion advocacy, and we have always stood behind policies that seek to end criminalization of behaviors that are perfectly normal, of which abortion is one. Abortion is health care, it is a human right, and the people of San Antonio deserve the right to access abortions without fear. I urge you to vote yes on this resolution and protect the bodily autonomy of our community members. Thank you, Mr. Arguello. Silvia Villarreal followed by Stephen McGinty. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, good afternoon, Mayor and City Council members. My name is Sylvia Villarreal and I'm a long-time resident of District 9. Today I come to ask each and every one of you to please vote no for this resolution. I am not sure why the architect of this resolution mentioned quite a few words that were kind of hyperbole. One was racism. Another one was safe. Another one was risk of death and bodily injury. And another one, yes, coercion. Ladies and gentlemen, please step back and research or just simply read up on some of these points that you all allude to in your point of view, and carefully think about racism, which how racist is abortion? Think about it, because the targeted population in Bear County are Hispanics and other minorities. Two, safe. Indeed, we want safety and protection for all the women of San Antonio. So please take note of who most of these abortionists are. I tell you, most of these abortionists come from the bottom of the barrel. They can't even get, you know, they can't get malpractice insurance, much less hospital privileges because of all their malpractice. Another one, risk of death and bodily injury. And all these things are in this resolution. Thank you, Please Ms. Please take a look, and I ask you Stephen to vote no. Stephen McGinty. Stephen McGinty, followed by Leslie Casillas. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Stephen McGinty, and uh, I have a verse. It says, the thief comes only to steal and kill 
and destroy I have come that they have may have love and have it to fall. And um, God said, don't kill babies. That's a lie. God said, though thou shall not kill other babies before us. And thank you. Have a great time. Thank you, Mr. McGinty. Thank you. Leslie Casillas, followed by Jeff Gordon. Hi, thank you. Hi, thank you. So I first wanted to start with that I am not a white birth giver. I am a mother of six children. They grew in me. They are the same as they were at conception, the same at week six, the same at week 10, the same at week 16, the same at week 24, 30, 35, 40 at birth, and their respective ages now. This is science, science that proves the development of the child in the womb. Why is abortion being sold as health care? Why not help a mother and family in need instead of convincing them that they aren't worthy of being parents and having a career? You can do both. Furthermore, there is free conception available from Obamacare. And a DNC is not an abortion. You are, you are not going to go to jail. Stop spreading lies, please. Everyone yelling here, do you realize that you are promoting a culture of death? Why not life? There's a fundamental, fundamental human right to life, not a fundamental right to abortion. Abortions are not normal, and it's not health care. It's not good. It is cruel to kill babies. It astonishes me, although it shouldn't, that people think that this is about a woman and they stop there. They don't even go to the next part and think about that there's a baby in the womb and there's scientific facts behind that. We are not anti-abortion. We are pro-life. It's, an, it's illegal in the state of Texas, but how far will the city go? Will they spend tax dollars in fighting this in court? And that would go to funding the needs, that could go to the needs of other citizens. Crime is up in San Antonio, and spending money on litigation is not what we need. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Casillas. Jeff Gordon. Mr. Gordon, you'll be followed by Paul Como. San Antonio City Council, I, along with many San Antonians, implore you to defuel the rocket ship of deceit and shame this resolution launches on this city. The truth is that you are enabling the killing of many human beings. Rather, let the council recognize that over 90% of pregnant women, when they see their baby in the womb, they have their precious baby. Why do you think Planned Parenthood does not show the baby to the woman? They who profit from the abortion, they want to keep women in the dark about what is truly in a woman's heart, inside her motherly, loving, bodily autonomy. And that fact that the council must get behind women's care is available to them. There's women's care out there for their babies, even after birth for years to come. I yield the rest of my time now to the silenced millions who cannot speak because their lives were deceitfully, unjustfully, and unmercifully terminated by abortion. Thank you, Mr. Gordon. Paul Como. Mr. Como, you'll be followed by Jack Finger. Thank you. I'm in District 6. It's Harvard. I've sent emails related to this in more detail. I oppose this resolution for reasons included uh, to follow. Regarding re reproductive freedom, it seems like I've shortened the time here. I may need help with somebody. The le legitimacy of choice is whether to have sex, which could lead to pregnancy. Regardless of whether a preventative birth control is attempted, recognizing it, it sometimes fails. Once a pregnancy occurs, a new human being exists and is entitled to protection like other human beings. The choice, once pregnant, is whether to keep the child or give him or up for adoption. People need to change their mindsets on this. Uh, the long-lived cultural disputes over whether an unborn human being is a person and or has rights must be acknowledged. There is a direct analogy from American legal principles that should apply here. Civil law, the preponderance of evidence, not only a distinctly separate human DNA and the unborn, but also witness many a mother and other family members who have already bonded with, even named their unborn human being long before 
connoting personhood. Criminal law, an unborn human being deserves the benefit of the doubt, should be considered a person, a person until proven otherwise, and certainly does not deserve the death penalty, which is abortion. I urge you to oppose this resolution. Thank you, Mr. Como. Jack Finger, followed by Raquel Cervantes. Mayor Nirenberg and other members of our illustrious San Antonio City Council, for the record, my name is Jack M. Finger. You know, y'all uh, really t made a big mistake. You thought uh, abortion was going to be as popular as climate change protection or, or gay rights. Uh, boy, did you get a wrong number. You know, I'm also impressed with the deceptions that have been presented here today, you know, including, Mr. Mayor, the fact that we are entitled to three minutes here at this podium, and you have cut that in half. Also, the deception that uh, uh, abortion is health care. No, abortion is not health care. Abortion is big people killing little people. Yeah, and also, um, but let's look, look at the resolution. Blow that up if you would, Mr. Audiovisual Man. Yeah, the, the city of San Antonio intends to prioritize the protection of reproductive rights in the city's legislative agenda for the upcoming state of Texas legislative session. Thank you. Return the camera to the podium, if you would. Yeah, yeah. So you want to spend our tax dollars paying lobbyists to go up to Austin promoting your, yes, evil. Sorry, we don't like that. Thank you, Mr. Finger. Raquel Cervantes. Ms. Cervantes, you've been followed by Michael Osborne. In 1970, a Texas woman instituted federal action against the District Attorney of Dallas who enforced oppressive state legislation that limited women's rights to privacy and access to health care. The brave action of the pseudo name Jane Roe has led to the landmark Supreme Court ruling of 1973, Roe v. Wade, which protected Americans' rights to a safe abortion, which has led to an infinite amount of lives saved. I repeat, a lives saved because according to World Health Organization, who an annual of 13.2% of maternal deaths can be attributed to unsafe abortions in 2019. Can you imagine how much that rate will increase now that Texas women are now subject to being charged with a felon for deciding to do what is right for their selves or their families? When you outlaw abortion, it won't stop abortion, just safe abortion. After almost half a century of precedent, an extreme right majority led Supreme Court has regressed all of the pro progress that American women has fought for, despite their empty promises not to. The over overruling of Roe v. Wade has now reenacted an archaic state law that criminalizes the actions of scared innocent women. Now is the time for Texas women to rise up again and fight the sick control and suppression of women's bodily autonomy and reclaim our rights to our own bodies. Texans has done it once before and will do it again. The City Council of San Antonio must decide which side of history they will be a part of. The side that is hell-bent on prosecuting desperate, vulnerable women or the side that aided Texas women in achieving one step closer to our liberation. Thank you, Ms. Cervantes. Michael Osborne. Mr. Osborne, you'll be followed by Marilyn Martinez. A few Sundays back, the first reading from Genesis tells of Abraham trying to haggle the Lord down to spare Sodom and Gomorrah. We know that there were not ten righteous people on their city councils either. You realize the failure of the public school systems in starting your own. You just don't seem to recognize that that nexus is the same for crime, immigration, immigration Sutherland Springs, Uvalde, and yes, abortion, all of society's ills. The fix is in the Lord, in the plan he created, the very character of the human animal, a body and soul. You can't continue to get your kicks on Route 666. I am requesting you to vote against the proposed resolution. It's a given that health care is imperative 
but cloaking murder under the guise of health care and name-dropping the word racism fools no one. It is a feeble attempt to avoid providing real health care and avoids addressing the many ills that plague the citizens of San Antonio and to politicize morality and the lack thereof. The societal nexus for abortion is the same that led to the smuggling and deaths of illegal aliens in semi-trailers. Sanctuary cities didn't solve that root cause. It only exacerbated it. The same nexus that led to Uvalde and all mass murders. The same nexus that leads to all crime in San Antonio. Respect for life begins before conception. Pope St. John Paul II explains the nexus in his seminal work Thank you, entitled Mr. Osborne. Theology of the Body. Marilyn Martinez. Ms. Martinez, are you approaching? Are you Ms. Martinez? Okay. Uh, you'll be followed by Lu Luis Marco. My name, can you hear me? It's been a while since I used one of these things. Uh, my name is Marilyn Martinez. I reside in District 8. I'm here to speak in opposition to the measure being proposed for vote today. As I read the contents of this resolution, I find it, as in the case, too often to be heavily weighted in language about rights and supposed rights of the mother wanting to terminate her pregnancy, but with little to no consideration <clears throat> for the rights or perspective of the one whose life is being extinguished. Most of the rights secured by the Constitution and the Bill of Rights were first enshrined in the English common law and were enumerated and in into, in, incorporated into our Constitution. The legal question is, do the rights of the, in the Bill of Rights and the immunities protected by the 14th Amendment apply to the unborn? In other words, is there an English common law and therefore in our Constitution any declaration of the rights of the unborn which warrant incorporation in the 14th Amendment? The answer is yes. There is a principle in Blackstone referring, referring directly to the unborn, clearly and direct as any references to the right of privacy or any other rights listed in the Bill of Rights is a clear declaration of the rights and refers specifically to the unborn. One who is in the womb is held as already born whether, whenever a question arises for its benefit. Thank you, Ms. Martinez. Luis Marco. Luis Marco. Teresa Cathcart. Ms. Cathcart, you'll be followed by Christine Lopez. Yes, thank you for allowing me to speak. My name is Teresa Rodriguez Cathcart. I was born on January 22nd, Roe v. Wade, 1966, six years before the law became legal to abort children. I stand here because I, my life was protected. So I'm here to speak for the unborn. I've also opened up two pregnancy care centers, one that services San Antonio, one's out in Spring Branch. When I was in college, I did have an unplanned pregnancy. But my boyfriend told me, he goes, we'll make it. And we did. And my son has a doctorate from the, the University of Texas Pharmacy School in Austin, Texas. He has grown. He was just featured in Southern Living Magazine in April of this year. He's on billboards, him and his family. Life is good. Life is good, and that is what I'm here to say to you. God gives us a verse that I want to read to you. Let's see if I get it. My. It's Romans 9.20, and it says, But who are you, a human being, to talk back to God? Shall what is form say to the one who formed it, Why did you make me like this? Your life belongs to God. He created it, he formed it, he allowed it. And I'm just here to give you my testimony and I oppose the resolution. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Carthgard. Christine Lopez. Christine Lopez. Hadassah Rivera. Hadassah Rivera, okay. You'll be followed by Richard Favela. Oh, sorry. 
I would like to speak in support of this resolution in order to protect people's health and their safety. Politicians are making decisions about our bodies and futures that often result in long-term consequences of pain, trauma, and instability for both the parent and the offspring's life. Tell me how the city of San Antonio will fully support the life of a child born without shelter and how you will safely protect them. I'd like to know what those who are anti-choice are going to put into place to care for a disabled parent or a child parent and the accommodations they will need in order to keep their child alive. Now, immediately. Tell me how you will enforce abortion bans while preventing death of living, breathing people. Forcing children into li lives of sexual or physical abuse. Ignoring the countless terrifying possibilities of what that life may lead to if every pregnant person is forced into the role of a mother with no res regard to how unfit that role may be. According to Duke University peer-reviewed study, when abortions are banned, the number of abortions performed won't decrease significantly, while pr pregnancy-related deaths would increase 22%. Pregnancy is deadly, that is a fact. I want protection for myself and I want protection for those who can't protect themselves, those who are disabled, mentally, physically handicapped, and many individuals who have been stripped of what control they had over their own bodies, their future, their hormones, and their health. Safety is a human right. What happens to my mind, my body, and my health is my choice, not Thank a politician. Christine Lo Sorry. Richard Favetta. Richard Favela, oh. Nicholas Solis, Mr. Solis, you'll be followed by Melanie Salazar. Good afternoon. My name is Nicholas Solis. I'm a resident of District 3 and a student at UTSA, and I'm here today to support the resolution. Access to safe and dignified abortions is a fundamental right and a human necessity. The state of Texas has failed to recognize this reality and is preparing to impose an authoritarian law on our city, which, as shown by many brave people today, is unpopular with San Antonians and works against the interests of our city. Our city government has a duty to protect the prosperity of its citizens. Abortion bans shrink economic growth and block opportunities to build wealth. Those forced into unwanted pregnancies will see longer periods of poverty, a lowering of their credit scores, and their job prospects and opportunities slip away. These abortion bans will hinder our progress and growth for years to come. San Antonio also has a duty to protect the public health. The research has found that abortion bans increase rates of domestic violence. Abortion bans also increase the rate of infant health problems, and despite assurances that life-threatening abortions will be exempted, the research guarantees we will still see an increase in pregnancy-related deaths. This will be a public health crisis. It is clear to me and many other residents that banning abortion will only hurt our city, and we must do everything we can to decriminalize abortion within our city limits. Today, I ask the City Council to stand up for bodily autonomy, stand up for abortions, stand up for the Grace Act, and pass this resolution. Thank you, Mr. Solis. Melanie Salazar. Ms. Salazar, you'll be followed by Leela Weichel. Hello, Mayor and City Council members. My name is Melanie Salazar, 23 years old, a proud San Antonian from the South Side. I'm Chicana, third generation Mexican-American descent. I identify as feminist, a political moderate, I'm vegetarian, and I am a survivor of eight years of child sexual abuse. I'm boldly, firmly, and unabashedly anti-abortion. I'm here today to be a voice for the pre-born who are a marginalized and oppressed group who cannot speak for themselves. I don't say I believe what the science says when life begins at fertilization. I'm saying I recognize what the science says because the science exists and is true whether I like it or not. To be pro-equality for humans, we must include all humans in the fight for equality, and that includes even our pre-born members of the human species. I believe all humans deserve the right to live free from violence, and abortion, now in a post-Roe, Texas, was the legal suctioning, dismemberment, poisoning, and starvation of your pre-born constituents. As a feminist, I believe real progress is telling women that yes, we can. We can go to school and have our babies. We can have our careers and have our children. We can have our families and succeed and follow our dreams. So I ask you, please, to consider what does real equality look like? What does real progress look like? And please protect 
protect your preborn constituents and advance real equality for our women by voting against the resolution. Thank, Thank you, Ms. You. Salazar. Leila Weichel. Ms. Weichel, you'll be followed by Kayla Perez. Hi, my name is Leila Weichel, and I am a midwife, nurse practitioner, working 12 years in communist country, um, northern part of Croatia. I was head nurse of clinics when I decided to look for another job because I decided to be pro-life after things that were happening, and I saw damage that is done to women. Um, they uh, created a job for me just to keep me abortionists like this. I work with 16, 17 gynecologists that were doing abortions, surgical abortions, because they had to, they would lose job. And uh, I was always doing uh, pro-life things, saving lives. I did what I supposed to do. And they didn't want to lose me, so they created a job as head nurse of clinics. And for uh, my job description was for medical education population. After 15 years, I will tell you a few cases because I have no time. There was a woman, I uh, tried to get her to say, baby, not to do abortion. So I was working in different departments. She uh, did anyway, and after I moved to the United States, she, after 15 years, told my parents, well, they had no idea about anything, how much she saw, she didn't listen to me, and she was helping with the wedding, and she never wanted to take any money. That's how much she was damaged after what she has done. Another thing uh, I was doing uh, here in San Antonio, my obstetrician, uh, giving him advice. Thank you, Ms. Weichel. Thank you very much. Yes. I just want to let you know. Pettis. Anyway. I, uh, like Pettis, this way, we, are, we are as a group. I think we would have four minutes because we are what, registered do, as are, a group. Are you signed up to speak? Yes, yes. What's your name? Michelle DePierre and Nadia Gullian, and they sign also. So that What's your name, ma'am? Michelle and Nadia Guillen. Nadia. Margaret Guillen? Nadia. Nadia yeah, Guillen. Neither one group. of you are signed up to speak. A lady did sign them as a You're group. You're not on the list, ma'am. Um, we're going to go now to yes, we, Kayla Perez. Yes, we were on the list. Yes. Ms. Perez, you'll be followed by Luz Gallegos. Hi, City Council. My name is Kayla Perez. I'm in District 5. Um, I am in support of this resolution, and I do support my other comrades in stating that there needs to be um, clarification in the language of ensuring that anybody seeking reproductive services, especially abortion, would be the lowest priority. Um, I know a lot of people were like, oh, women should be allowed to, you know, have the choice, of course, to pursue a career and also have their children and family. Again, that is a choice that is available to people already just as it should also be a choice for people uh, who recognize that having a kid is not their time. And that's completely valid, again, their choice. Um, I do believe that if people are going to insist on there being uh, forced birth, that there should also be an advocacy for universal health care. There aren't anybody out here forcing doctors to be doctors. Most people choose, again, to be doctors. Most people choose to be uh, their profession. Uh, moving on, uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I got to say is just if they're not going to support any sort of actual meaningful health care services and I'm going to insist on crisis centers that base themselves off of coercion and manipulation and guilting women for having pregnancies that they're not completely sure of should be illegal, you know, no one likes to be coerced. Uh, other than that, uh, we don't support white supremacists or fascists in this country. So have a great day. Thank you, Ms. Perez. Luz Gallegos. Luz Gallegos. Thank you, sir. What's your name, sir? My name is Luz Gallegos. Okay. You I'm have... a member of the Allied Women's Center. Okay. I want to thank the mayor and the council people for allowing us to come out here and speak and speak on behalf of the of this resolution. Uh, before I do, I just want to say a few words to the audience here. God is pro-life. And for those who do not believe in God... Mr. Gallegos, you're addressing the council, sir. Okay. Um, 
First of all, Mayra, I just want to say that uh, at its most basic level, the pro-life message is this. An unborn child is a human person who has life, whose life has value and deserves to be protected by our, our society. But we also have an important message to share about how abortion harms women and men and about how committed the pro-life movement is to helping women face untimely pregnancies and choose life for their babies. Ultimately, our message is a message of hope. We believe that working together, we can transform our society into a place in which no mother will ever resort to abortion and where every child, regardless of the circumstances of his or her conception would be welcome and love. I also want to say this. I don't know what it is about people that don't understand the laws of God which says, thou shall not kill. And um, Thank I you, Mr. Gallegos. Kevin Frago. I'm sorry? Thank you, Mr. Gallegos. Yeah. Kevin Frago. Kevin Frago. Adele Barnett. Ms. Barnett, you'll be followed by Alejandra Dip. Good afternoon, and thank you all for your patience. It's obviously a long afternoon for everyone. Uh, my name is Adele Primomo Barnett. I uh, have been an RN for 48 years, and I have also been an attorney for 35 years. I am against the resolution. I feel it is very one-sided and it fails to recognize the victims. Women do have a right to health care. We all can get our physicals, our cardiac care, our mammograms, our pap smears, our mental health care. We can learn about birth control and we all have access to that. But abortion is not general health care. It isn't. Abortion is basically the ending of a life, and it is the stopping of a beating heart. And there's no way that that is not true. We all know that's true. When I worked as a D in the DA's office, I worked under Fred Rodriguez and Stephen Hilbig. I was a prosecutor. I did prosecute murder cases. And in order for the jury not to forget the victim who was never there, I would put an empty chair. Thank you, Ms. Barnett. Alejandra Dip. Hi, everyone. I think I'm the last one, so we're almost done. Uh, my name is Alejandra Dip. I am a 19-year-old student at UTSA. Um, I'm also a Mexican uh, immigrant. I'm a part of Students for Life at UTSA, and I work as a sidewalk intern for the San Antonio Coalition for Life, giving free and low-cost resources for women. Working on the sidewalk in front of the abortion clinics, I have seen the effect abortion has on women and on men, both physically and mentally. The fact is, abortion is not healthcare. Abortion is not a right. It is never a right to kill an innocent human person. As Americans, we know that the right to life is something we need to protect, and I ask you to protect it. I urge the council to, instead of promoting the murder of our pre-born fellow humans, we promote all of the free resources pregnancy centers offer, including free pregnancy tests, free ultrasounds, and even full payment for the birth and after care, after birth resources. Let's help women understand that they don't need abortions to be successful. They don't need abortions to have a happy life because they are not alone. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Dip. I want to thank everybody uh, for coming out to speak today. We're going to get now into our council discussion. Uh, first, I want to let my colleagues know that we do have some city staff who are here if, you, if there are questions substantive to the resolution for consideration. And before we get to our discussion, I want to thank Councilmember Castillo uh, for spearheading the resolution that we're considering today. While the legal, 
While the legal authority over reproductive health policy lies with the state and federal governments, we do refuse to stand idly by and watch an important constitutional right be taken away without speaking on behalf of our constituents. This resolution, which has been crafted by my colleagues and I with the city attorney's office, affords us an opportunity to emphasize our unwavering support for access to reproductive health care. Clearly, the recent Supreme Court Roe v. Wade ruling is an attack on the health and independence of women, people of color, and the disadvantage across our city, across our state, and across our country. Communities that will disproportionately be impacted by draconian state laws limiting Americans' right to health care. Access to basic medical treatment, including abortion, is a human right. Criminalizing those who seek abortion care will create a hostile and dangerous future for far too many. I strongly support the resolution's intent to prevent city funds from being used to gather individuals' information on reproductive care for the purpose of pursuing a criminal investigation. Additionally, the resolution marks the first step toward prioritizing the protection of reproductive rights in the city's legislative agenda. As federal and state law changes in the future, we must do all we can to support and gain ground for reproductive freedom. So I'm going to recognize now Councilmember Castillo for a motion and for comments. Councilmember Castillo. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Uh, with that, I move to adopt the resolution titled Resolution of the City of San Antonio to Support Individuals' Rights to Health Care. Second. Second. Thank you. Thank you. And I want to thank again everyone for being here today. And I want to open by reiterating that abortion is and will never stop being health care. Everyone deserves access to a safe abortion and other reproductive health care. San Antonio has a history and identity for fighting back against injustice. When the state attempted to tell parents which books their kids could and could not read, San Antonio passed the Freedom to Read resolution. Now many of our local libraries have banned book displays right in front and center of the entrances of our libraries. When data showed women in San Antonio face inequity in the workplace, City Council adopted the Gender Pay Parity Resolution. Then voters approved the Ready to Work, which predominantly has helped place women in better paying careers. Make no mistake, San Antonio, from books to pay parity to housing to infrastructure, your city backs up these resolutions with action. And while there are significant things outside the control of the authority of the city, we must do everything in our power to protect all those seeking abortion and other reproductive health care from unnecessary harassment. By passing this resolution, the city of San Antonio is committing to not using any city funds or data to sell out persons seeking out a safe abortion. Furthermore, Council is communicating to our governmental relations team that, that, is, that we are priori prioritizing protecting persons seeking an abortion, that it is a priority heading into the state legislative session. But make no mistake, while we're up here and we're going to get into some debate and discussion, the merits of adopting this resolution primarily came about because thousands of residents took to the streets week after weeks to support reproductive health care. And with that, I want to express my gratitude for Buckle Bunnies, Lilith Fun, Mujeres Marchan, the PSL, the San Antonio Chapter, the San Antonio DSA, AFL-CIO, and Andres uh, Coetzi from the University Church. I'm also glad to see that the mayor and the district attorney attended and spoke to folks at the federal courthouse. It's important for elected officials to be on the ground with the people who put us in these seats. And I also want to recognize Councilman Bravo. When I called in, um, to talk about this resolution, his sleeves were already rolled up. He had already talked with the appropriate city staff to talk about what we can do to protect San Antonio women. And to my colleagues who stood at the forefront of City Hall, um, Councilwoman Gabriel Havardal, Councilwoman Felix Villagran, Councilman Courage, and Bravo for standing at the steps of City Hall, thank you. And to my colleagues who I know are going to give comments and support. When elected officials understand and are in tune with community, it's reflected in the policy language that we put forward. So in this resolution, council recognizes eliminating access to abortion health care dramatically increases the risk of death and bodily injury, especially within low-income women and communities of color. 
The nearest care for someone in Bear County could travel for an abortion would be effectively inaccessible to someone who is low income and or has no reliable means of transportation. Equitable access to abortion care requires financial and logistical support, most often provided by abortion funds, practical support organization, and volunteers. The city has a responsibility to protect its residents from any violation of their protected human rights and exercise thereof. I do have a few questions for uh, city staff. Uh, Andy, on page one, um, can you briefly explain the following language in the resolution where it states, whereas the three state laws that ostensibly apply to abortions have yet to be reconciled or clarified so that an individual can fully understand what behavior would violate the respective laws. Uh, is it correct to say at this point the state law is not clear enough um, to determine which criminal act an abortion would fall under? Uh, yes, Councilwoman, I can answer that. Uh, right now, there are three laws that uh, will govern abortion. Uh, one is the 1925 statute that was passed uh, that's right now uh, through going through some litigation in terms of whether that is still valid or not. Right now, the Texas Supreme Court, it says that it held that in abeyance until uh, there's, a, there's a resolution on the merits, but they did say that only the administrative provisions of that and not the uh, criminal liability is enforceable under the 1925 Act. Then you have the trigger law, uh, which will come into effect August 25th. It does uh, criminalize abortion. Uh, again, that doesn't come into effect until August 25th. And then you have the current law that's in effect, the heartbeat law, that has no criminal liability. So really the, the, the legal uh, issue will be to what extent does the um, trigger law, which again has a criminal liability, how will that interact with the criminal liability of the 1925 statute if ultimately that is passed? So uh, that is why that sentence is there is because right now there's a lot of fluidity in the law. Um, hopefully that will be rectified in the coming months. Um, but how those two laws will operate, particularly from a criminal law standpoint, uh, that, that does create some confusion. Thank you, Andy. With it currently being in flux, we have um, the service priority calls that were up. And depending on the nature of the offenses and the priority, there are certain levels that PD responds to calls. Um, so I, my question, Eric, is if the state ends up providing a clear definition on the criminal act, then what is the process to determine a call for service priority that uh, the act would fall under? So, Councilwoman, um, if, if made clear from the state perspective, um, if there's a, um, a statute that is established or through the courts or future legislature, um, then generally, and if you look at this, this list, um, things that occur or that may be occurring where there is um, threat to immediate life mm -hmm. or violence um, are going to be on the top end of that scale in terms of priority order. Um, and, and the analogy that, that I guess I'll give is that um, if we get a 911 call that um, a neighbor is stealing a bike versus a, a 911 call that says the, the neighbor is stealing the bike and has a weapon, the, the weapon call is going to be in a higher priority. Um, and so we'll go through that analysis to make sure that it's prioritized accordingly, um, in addition to all the other 2 million 911 calls we get. All right, thank you. And, and my hope is that with the pass of this resolution, uh, can we commit that the chief report back to full council and or the public safety committee on any changes regarding this law or the clarification of the law? So uh, under the resolution under section six, it says that the city manager will update the city council in the event of future changes to federal law, state law, or technology that affect this resolution. So I'll be doing that for the entire council. Great, thank you, Eric. And I wanna thank my uh, sincere thanks to city staff and the city manager and the city's attorney's office for helping us uh, calibrate and draft uh, this resolution. And I also wanna thank, again, the mayor for recognizing the urgency of adopting this resolution and setting a special meeting. Um, I'm extremely grateful again to all my council colleagues up here who have expressed support uh, in this resolution, and I can't explain how um, important it is for San Antonio women to know that they have you alls support. Uh, I quickly want to thank Council Members Chito, Chito Vela and Vanessa Fuentes who provided the framework for this resolution via the GRACE Act. Um, I look forward to discussion and debate, um, and thank you, Mayor.
Thank you, Councilmember Castillo. Councilmember McKee Rodriguez. Thank you. Um, I didn't think I would be speaking so early, but um, I want to first say how you know I'm very inspired. Um, simultaneously, though, I am disgusted. Um, I want to begin by thanking the tireless efforts of many who have fought to protect bodily autonomy and women's rights and trans rights for many, many years. This is not a this is not a battle that began a mere. Um, this is rather a fight for reproductive justice that spans generations. And to all have, who have been in the fight, today would not have been possible without your diligence and commitment to justice and freedom. I also want to send my love and gratitude for those of you who came up here today and courageously shared personal and emotional testimony, and those are the voices that we should be centering in our decision making. I also want to publicly rep reprimand those of you who have villainized and antagonized those who came up here today to do so. None of us are owed these stories. You are not entitled to anyone else's experiences or pain. They shouldn't have to tell you about their sexual assault or about their health complications or give you any reason why they did or did not get an abortion. I want to say thank you for those of you who did come here and called upon us to act prior to this through letters, through calls to our office, to e from emails, and today I do believe that we're going to make the right decision. I also want to address those of you who, with very ugly intent, over here, I think they actually left, there were some people with very ugly intent who were taking pictures and videos of those who did come up here to share personal stories um, with the goal of mocking them and endangering them, and that was very unkind and a very harmful action, and I'm hopeful that you reflect on that and grow up. I see the signs also, I see the signs, equity begins at birth. And in reality, equity begins when you focus your resources on communities and people who have been marginalized, under-resourced, and without. And that includes healthcare. So what has been said and what has been ignored countless times is that in some instances, forced births lead to the death of the pregnant person. To take away the right to abortion is murder. And that is not equity. So to many of you on this side, I hope for your growth and your willingness to listen because it has not been demonstrated today. There is nothing that can be said that you haven't heard before and you have made a conscious decision not to listen. It is also a privilege for you to walk in here and say and hold signs that say adoption is the healthier option. I implore each of you to lend your support to one of the 52,397 Texas children in foster care or or the 3,800 children and teenagers in Texas awaiting adoption. I also implore you to support those who do seek to adoption because there are real and true barriers to adoption for people like me and my husband. I also encourage you to join us in Austin this next session to fight for gun law reform, and I'm sure we can agree that guns kill people, and that seemed to matter to you today. Also, Jane Roe, Norma McCorv McCorvey, was paid off to become an anti-abortion activist and acknowledge this before her death. So you thought you ate that, but you did not. <laughs> Lastly, while you're here today, there is a pro-life elected official somewhere making, their making sure that their mistress has access to an abortion. I want to send my utmost praise and gratitude to Councilman Castillo for her work on this resolution and for doing a lot of the behind the scenes work in language and negotiation to bring this conversation to us today, giving us an opportunity to demonstrate our support for women's rights and the rights of all of those who have the capacity for pregnancy. Additionally, I appreciate District Attorney Jill Gonzalez and Sheriff Javier Salazar and their public commitment to not prosecute, criminalize, or apprehend anyone seeking abortion care. I join many of you and a majority in the United States and in San Antonio and Bear County in supporting the right to abortion for anyone at any time because abortion is health care. And while continued attacks on our and while continued attacks on our inalienable freedoms are present, that will mean that the need to fight is going to continue to be present. So thank you for joining us today. We received a call to action by several community leaders and organizations that I respect tremendously to support a resolution similar to the Grace Act in Austin. 
And this call to action included explicit language to ensure that abortion is the absolute lowest priority for SAPD. And I have the consent from organization leadership um, to name Planned Parenthood South Texas, Lilith Fund, Urge, Southwest Workers Union, Women's March San Antonio, Equality Texas, Act for SA, and Healthcare Now as folk who have asked to include this language explicitly in the resolution. As I mentioned today, Councilman Castillo worked diligently with city staff and she, you know, she worked <laughs> with city staff to see that that language is included. And she took all of those factors into consideration and city staff did and I, you heard her line of questioning and I hope today that you can trust that the resolution that we will pass today was built with all of you in mind. And so I do believe that what we got today is the best that we can pass right now. I appreciate you all so much. Again, thank you to Councilman Castillo. Thank you to all of you who have shared your stories. Y'all are the best. Thank you, Councilmember McKee Rodriguez, Councilmember Cabello Haberda. Thank you, Mayor. And thanks to Councilwoman Castillo for initiating this resolution. Mainly thank you to each of you who spoke today, who took time to come down here and talk with us, but especially those of you who shared your abortion stories today. Bianca, Maricela, Lisbeth, Emma, it, your bravery is, is more than admirable. It's inspiring. And I, I thank you for coming today and telling your stories. As we've said before, you didn't have to do that. I also want to personally thank Sophia. I'm not sure if she's still here, but she has tirelessly fought for health care, and, and today is no different. So I thank you for that. Um, I'm going to say it up front. This resolution is the right thing to do. Roe Ro, Ro has framed women's lives for many generations. I was born the year after Roe, and here I am at 47 years old having to worry about my own health care, the health care of, of the women in my family and my loved ones. It transformed society, transformed the workplace, gave options that we didn't have before. Roe guided women's health care, set constitutional pre precedents, and gave women the guarantee that they are and will be responsible for their own bodies and their own health. All those things, health care, our constitutional rights as we knew them, and women's personal responsibility responsibility have been overturned, uprooted, and shattered. So yes, we need to have a clear direction for how we should use city funds in light of a law that makes criminals out of women who seek health care. A law that puts half of the population under suspicion for taking responsibility over our own health. Let me put this in context. We're having discussions um, with a backdrop of people from all over San Antonio calling for increased police patrols. As chair of our public safety committee, as steward of city funds, I believe we shouldn't divert funds away from making our neighborhoods safe and use them to police women. We simply don't have the resources for it. And we shouldn't take resources away from our city and prosecutors who come to work every day to make our city a safer place to live, work, grow, um, businesses and families. And let me clear about something else. In Texas, we have a fundamental belief in individual responsibility. I fundamentally support women's reproductive rights. Because of this, I believe city funds should not be used in any way to limit, remove, or co-opt a woman's responsibility for her own health, including her reproductive options and bodily autonomy. I would prefer that no one ever have to go through the harrowing and traumatizing experience of aborting a pregnancy, but city funds should not be used to remove women's fundamental rights, responsibilities, and personal decisions. It's a, it's a large and far-reaching issue than even we are discussing today. I received a call, um, I received many calls from my constituents talking about this issue, of course. It's, it's a passionate issue on both sides. I received a call from a woman who has been diagnosed with PCOS, polycystic ovary syndrome. It's a life-threatening condition that has nothing to do with abortion. She explained to me her body can randomly form cysts that can threaten her life. If a cyst forms, the procedure needed to save her life is now considered a criminal act has nothing to do with, with pregnancy. In order to prevent that from happening, she takes contraceptive medication. There are now real and serious threats to remove contraception as a woman's right. What is she supposed to do? What are other San Antonian women supposed to do? Are we gonna ask our police to, to, poli to police her, to arrest her? A woman should be allowed to make life-saving decisions for herself. No one, not me, not you, not the city or the courts, have a right to impose our beliefs on her or to co-opt her personal responsibility. My job is to stand up for my community. My job is to represent District 6 and my city, 
and my district has, has been vocal about this issue. The overwhelming majority of District 6 residents support the resolution we consider today. For that reason, I support the resolution. I also support this resolution because I, I started off by saying this is the right thing to do. And I thank you again, um, everyone, for being here. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councilmember Cabello Havarda, Councilmember Curry. Thank you, Mayor. There's been a lot of discussion from a lot of concerned citizens, and you'll hear more from council members. I just want to add that I believe in women's equality. And I recognize that the vast majority of abortions are very difficult decisions for families and women that have lasting impacts on their physical, emotional, and mental well-being. And I don't believe the government should come between the decisions of women, their families, and their health care providers. Nor do I believe government should be spying and collecting personal health information from women and their health care providers. And for those reasons, I will be supporting the resolution. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Courage, Councilmember Villagran. Thank you. To all of those who worked on this resolution and getting us here today, um, it's not where we expected to be, but here we are. I want to thank you for your efforts. There were some very moving stories on both sides. I thank you for sharing. There were stories about your journey, stories about your belief, and stories about your faith. As I personally prepared for this day, I gave myself an opportunity to speak with the women around me. I wanted to listen to their thoughts on this topic. I spoke to mothers, professionals, women of various faiths, mothers of children with disabilities, single mothers, and women without children. A conversation full of great input, concerns, and insight. I took the time to think about my neighborhoods in District 3, the struggles that are found in the different census tracts that include high poverty rates, domestic violence, restricted access to education and employment opportunities. I thought about the current poverty rate of San Antonio, 20%, and of that 20%, over half is women head of households. The struggle for women and injustice that we continue to experience is a centuries old struggle. The status of women in San Antonio study that we put out in 2019 brought to light the work this city has ahead. Today, we resolve that all individuals should have bodily autonomy. As mentioned in today's resolution, the right to abortion affects health, safety, economic stability, and quality of life. The ability to be able to determine what is necessary for one's health and well-being is our right. What is being put forward by the state forces women into a second-class status in which the general public can now have a say in an individual's health. Our country's history is one of documented facts in which women were hindered or denied access to the right to vote, building credit, equal pay, protecting themselves from abuse, and making their own health decisions. While sexual abuse like rape and incest still get continue to be reported in this city and women are not safe, we need to support this resolution. With this resolution today, we are saying we do not want to go back in time. There are action points both sides can take. Grandparents raising, for those that spoke against this resolution, grandparents raising grandkids need support. Currently, there are over 600 children that need adoption in Bear County and over 1,000 in foster care. For those that spoke, spoke for the resolution and want more, speak with your state and federal legislators, reach out to my office so that I can too, advocate to expand the Supreme Court, and yes, support grandparents raising grandkids. San Antonio continues leading in being an example of an equitable and inclusive city. If shared prosperity is our goal, we need to use our voice to support individuals and groups when their rights are threatened. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Villagran. Councilmember Sandoval. 
Thank you, Mayor. I hope everyone can hear me okay. Yes, we hear yes, you. Yes, we hear you. Thank you very much. Um, I also want to recognize and thank Councilwoman Castillo for her tremendously impressive work in uh, getting us to the point where we are today at this boat and for her courage in, in doing so. Thank you, Terry. And to city staff for um, helping with this process. Thank you. And to the mayor for agendizing it so quickly. Um, to all the people who came out today uh, to council chambers, uh, thank you for coming and expressing your views. And as was said before, thank you for sharing those personal stories that you didn't have to, uh, but giving us an insight into how you made your decisions. But ultimately, they were your decisions. And that's really what we're talking about is not taking away the ability of, that's why we're here, because we're concerned about women losing the ability to make those decisions. Um, but really, my understanding of what this resolution is doing is basically saying we're not, we don't want to spend your tax dollars on enforcing uh, these particular laws. Uh, we we have a lot of things to spend your tax dollars on. And I think the question is, do you really want us uh, spending it on enforcing something like this? Um, we don't have enough resources to enforce every single uh, law on the books. Um, in fact, uh, there is a, a constituent in my, uh, in my district whose uh, life was threatened by an intimate partner and we weren't able, just because we simply don't have the resources, we weren't able to react to that threat right away. It took several days to be able to do that. Um, and I, I couldn't possibly support moving resources to enforcing, um, you know, what the, what the state has done when we don't have enough resources to protect women who are, uh, who are victims and could be, um, could be killed by their intimate partner. I, I simply can't do that. Um, so I, I will be supporting this resolution. Um, as many of you know, um, or everybody knows now, <laughs> I welcomed uh, a baby into this world uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, it was a difficult decision to, to make. Um, to be a, a single mom, uh, to raise a child without a partner, uh, but it was my decision uh, to make. And uh, I respect that uh, we, all, we all need to be able to make those, own dis those decisions about uh, our families and our health. Uh, for those who say that abortion is not healthcare, it absolutely is. Um, and I simply can't believe that uh, we have a law on the books that's going to prohibit women from seeking this type of health care when their lives are in danger or when they've been uh, the victim of rape or abuse by family members. Um, so thank you very much, Councilwoman Castillo and Mayor and everyone. Um, I look forward to supporting this resolution when we vote. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Sandoval. Councilmember Perry. Thank you, sir. First of all, I'd like to thank everybody for showing up here today. What a great crowd here. Uh, I wish we had had this kind of interest in all of our council meetings up here uh, every week. But thank you all again for coming today. Um, we heard a lot of personal beliefs today uh, for and against this and with a lot of passion. Um, let me get my, mine out of the way. Uh, this is just a personal belief. We all have the right to have your own personal beliefs. Uh, and my personal beliefs align more with those expressed in a recent letter given to us by our own Archbishop here in San Antonio. You know, Archbishop Garcia Sayer to all of us here on City Council, where he emphasized the need for us in our community to become more positive and life-affirming 
And I agree with that. That's on my personal side. But there's a legal side on this also, a professional side that uh, I take very seriously. And let, let me go through that. Um, you know, and there's still misconceptions about this. When the Supreme Court ruled on Roe versus Wade, they said that it's not the purview of the federal government anymore. It's down to the state level, the individual state of the United States. And that's where the conversation should be had at the state level. Here in Texas, the state did not do like the Supreme Court and say, hey, we don't want to handle this. We're going to push this down to the county or city level. They didn't do that. This is up at the state level. And we don't have that purview to make decisions on this issue, on the abortion issue. Uh, we've got to be clear. This council resolution doesn't change the law in Texas. And we don't, we don't have that legal authority to act on it or create an ordinance to impact the issue here locally. That's, that's the law. It's at Texas. And I say, if you're unhappy with that, with the laws here in Texas, what do you do to make changes? You go to the ballot box and elect those officials that most represent your views that you want to see up, on the, up at the legislature in Austin. Again, it's at the state level. I'm also concerned about the language in this resolution that's asking the city council to support the district attorney's pledge not to fulfill the duties of his job. I don't support allowing the DA or the sheriff and having a free pass to uphold their oath of office, to not uphold their oath of office. The DA and sheriff took the same oath of office for their elected office, just as we did when we were elected. Uh, let me tell you what that says. I I'll give you my oath of office. I, Clayton Perry, do solemnly swear or affirm that I will faithfully execute the duties of the office of S San Antonio City Council of the state of Texas and will, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution and laws of the United States and of this state. So help me God. They took that oath of office just like we did. Everybody here on this council took that same oath of office to uphold the laws of this state. There's laws that we might not agree with. But we can't just simply ignore those laws. Now, there's some, uh, I've heard that there's some um, attorney prerogative, but they can't go, again, outside what the state allows. Can't do it. You know, and I just cannot support any resolution calling for this council to be complicit in failing to enforce the laws of this state and nation. Not to mention doing so will only open up our city and the county up to additional lawsuits from the state. That will happen if we go down this road. And what does that mean? It will we'll likely lose at the state level. And not only that, we're going to spend a heck of a lot of money trying to do that again. In this city, we've done that on numerous occasions already. This isn't a city council issue. At the end of the day, I think just by listening today, one side versus the other, this divides our community. It certainly does not unify it, as evidenced by today. So for these reasons, I'm not going to support this resolution today. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Councilmember Perry. Councilmember Pelias. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, there's a young woman who spoke to us um, from the podium named Desiree with an organization named Urge. Desiree, are you still here? Um, okay, well, uh, one of the things that she beseeched us is to be, and she said, I wrote it down, it's imperative that y'all be bold and explicit. And, and I agree. Um, 
and, and I'm going to do, I'm, I'm going to try to get to the bottom of some, some issues that we heard about today, because I think that, that there was some, some confusion, like there usually is whenever we talk about some complex topics. Um, and, and so Andy, help me out here. There's another young woman up there, and I, I wrote down what she said. Her name was Rachel. She said, the resolution's incomplete. What's missing from the resolution is making abortions SAPD's lowest priority. The domestic violence campaign is performative. If you pass this half-done resolution today, you need to show the same amount of courage that your constituents have exhibited. We want you to protect us. Your constituents um, are taking a risk. Instead, it ought to be you who takes the risk. Please take that risk so we don't have to. Another fellow who followed her was named Stephen, and he says, I fully support making a clear policy of SAPD to not go after people who get abortions. Andy, does this resolution require SAPD to de deprioritize abortion crimes? Uh, Councilman, no, no, it does not require that. Okay. So, and, and I think it's, it, it, to state it another way, it does not bind SAPD officers to do one thing or another because Texas law prohibits anybody on this dais, even if it's a unanimous body, from directing city officers as far as how they carry out their policing duties. Am I right? I would say as a general proposition, it's, it's state law, but more importantly, the city charter that sets the, the framework by which what council can or can't tell uh, Eric, what to do in terms so of So to put it city. even shorter, when I say, when somebody says that we have, by way of this resolution, are going to deprioritize and make police officers do one thing or another, that's not true. Am I right? Well, let, let me answer it this way, Councilman. Okay. Um, you, you're correct that the, the legal framework does not allow the council to direct Eric to do anything, okay. but what this resolution does, it does articulate, uh, if it passes, it does articulate a, a policy recommendation from the council that, again, I don't want to speak for Eric, but given his position, I wouldn't completely ignore that either. Right. Um, so, but to answer your question, yes, it, it doesn't direct him to do that, but it's an articulation of a it's an articulation of a policy recommendation. For it's counsel. an articulation of a policy recommendation, but it is not binding law that we are imposing, that we're imposing upon police officers as That's they correct. carry out their duty. All right. Somebody named Galaxy got up there and said, what you, are what you are doing, oh no, she asked, who are you to allow the DA to choose which laws to prosecute? Andy, correct me if I'm wrong. We have no control over what um, our DA does or doesn't do. He's got prosecutorial discretion. He decides how to manage his cases. Is that true? That's true that the council does not have authority to tell the DA what to do or not to do, but I do want to take the opportunity to, to clarify something Councilman Perry says. At the same time, he didn't say he was not going to enforce it. What he said he's going to use his discretion, right. which frankly he has on, on really any criminal liability law. And let's just assume for a second that, that Galaxy was right, that somehow we do have that authority, which we don't. Does that resolution do that? Do we somehow direct the DA to do one thing or another? No, we're not directing. The council's not directing the DA to do one thing or another. All right. Some other fella got up there named Thomas. Quote, unquote, this resolution is a violation of state and federal law. Andy, the way I read it is because it is a non-binding resolution that we really aren't creating a rule that anybody has to follow, and people can ignore us if they want to. Therefore, it's no violation of state or federal law. If it were an ordinance, then we would be subjecting ourselves to the scrutiny of some court for either doing it wrong or doing it right. Am I right about that? Well, again, thank you for the question. You're correct that I don't anticipate, again, as a city attorney, I don't anticipate litigation stemming from this resolution at all, because again, we work closely with the council, making sure that it met the legal framework. So um, no, I don't expect any, any significant litigation that, that come out from the resolution. All right. We have uh, th three other people who came up here. One of them said, we shouted for our city to do something and protect our reproductive freedoms and protect abortion access. That was a young woman named Nicolette. Samantha, a Trinity alum, said, this resolution completely removes civil rights of unborn children. And then a congressional candidate named Ms. Zapata said, 
the passage of this resolution decriminalizes abortion in San Antonio, it does just that, end quote. So, Andy, if I look at this resolution, is there anywhere in this non-binding resolution that creates a concrete measure that will make it easier or more difficult to get an abortion in San Antonio? Is there the is question, is it decriminalized? Or, or no, 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 no. I'm just no. asking you, is All there right. anywhere in this resolution that I will find any provision that will make it easier or less difficult to get an abortion in San Antonio? If you look at, uh, Councilman, if you look at, again, the policy recommendation, that, that is something that, obviously, Eric will listen to. Uh, so I'm, I, I, okay. I'm not going to say whether it impacts it incrementally or not, but I can say it does not, if, assuming, the uh, trigger law comes to effect August 25th, that there's no legal challenge and yeah. that it's held in abeyance, it does not decriminalize it. Okay, which was, so I, I, I need to hear that again, because I think I just heard you say this resolution does not decriminalize abortion in San Antonio. That is correct. All right, so here's, here's why I'm asking you these questions. I think abortion is a very delicate and important issue. For some people it's sacred um, because we're talking about rights. It's emotional, it stirs passions. It's very strong, the, 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 the passions that we're hearing. We saw it today. They're real. They're sincerely held beliefs. Let there be no doubt in anybody's mind about my position regarding abortion. I think it's health care. And I think it's a right, a human right that is being denied to women all over this country. I think the decision from the Supreme Court is just obscene cruelty. I think what we're getting from Austin in the, these uh, trigger laws are just, it's abhorrent and completely um, inhuman uh, what, what people are trying to do to, to women in San Antonio and all over the United States. Um, I, I, I can't find enough words with which to condemn what, what's happened in Austin and what's happening in D.C. I think the fecklessness that we're seeing out of uh, D.C. and uh, the meanness and the ugliness, uh, uh, ugliness uh, out of, uh, out of the governor's office and out of the lieutenant governor's office is, is just embarrassing. I, I also want to make sure that people never forget that I've spent my career fighting for the rights of vulnerable women. Um, I, I've given up blood, sweat, tears, money, time, my family's time, and I've represented hundreds upon hundreds of battered women throughout Texas, and I will continue to do that, and anybody who ever wants to deny women a right uh, that is theirs, that is sacred, they've picked a fight with me as far as I'm concerned. I believe that men should take ownership of some of this problem, a lot of this problem. It was created by men and I think that it won't get solved unless men participate in the solution. I have chosen this fight for, for women's rights and, and dedicated a lot of my life to it because it's the right thing to do. And I'm raising my son um, to uh, honor that, that value, right? Um, and I think it's so important, and I respect the people who came up here to talk about this so much that I'm sorry that you're being, somehow that you're under the impression that this resolution is going to, after today's vote, make San Antonio a safer place for women. It won't. San Antonio will remain just as dangerous today for people, for women who want to get abortions. A non-binding resolution is insufficient to address the problem. I think it's embarrassing that somehow this thing was worded and crafted in a way that creates the impression in good people's minds that your life is going to materially and palpably be changed, right? And I respect you too much to treat such an important issue with a little bit of razzle-dazzle and a little bit of performative uh, resolutions. I want an ordinance that makes it obligatory for us to not spend money on, on this kind of cruelty. But Andy, is that legal? Councilman, it'll depend on, on the ordinance. I'd have to look at it, but okay. conceptually, no. Yeah, so uh, I'm going to vote no because I think you deserve better. And I'll, I'll follow up with some other comments later if you, if you have any questions. Um, thank you for joining us today, and uh, I hope you understand my vote. Thank you, Councilmember Palaez. Councilmember Bravo. 
Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> While we were listening to both sides on this for public comment, I received an email that said it was breaking news. The Justice Department is suing the state of Idaho over a law that the agency said would inhibit emergency room doctors from performing abortions in medical emergencies, which tells me very clearly that abortion is health care. And, you know, we've heard a lot about um, what pro-life is. I think pro-life means different things to different people, and I want to share what it is to me. Uh, to me, pro-life is ensuring that we have access to affordable health care, that everyone has access to affordable health care. Pro-life is ensuring that, um, that babies have adequate supplies of baby formula in our country. Um, pro-life is creating sensible immigration policies so that we aren't finding trailers full of dead immigrants uh, here in our community. Um, it's not protesting a migrant resource center to assist documented immigrants uh, who are escaping murder in their own home countries. Um, you know, pro-life is enforcing child support payments, which is something that we do a terrible job of. And there's, you know, it, the, the average payment that's made in our country is less than $300 a month, and I don't know how you raise a child on that. Uh, pro-life, for me, as a gun owner, a lifelong gun owner, is having sensible gun policies. Um, and pro-life, finally, is uh, taking action on climate issues as we approach a climate emergency right now. Um, I also want to say that I've been following this closely ever since the Roe versus Wade um, Supreme Court, re the recent Supreme Court decision, and I've noticed that uh, when men, uh, male legislators, are weighing in on this issue, uh, they begin to, as they begin to talk about this, they make it very clear that they don't even understand uh, basic biology, f the female anatomy, uh, how pregnancy works, and it's, it's just ludicrous. And uh, I think we really need to get away from men trying to regulate women and their, their autonomy in health care. And I'm going to be supporting this measure. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councilmember Bravo. Councilmember Rocha Garcia. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you to all who came out to speak today, and thank you also to um, my colleagues for the thoughtful um, and careful consideration and, and deliberation, and um, I, I wanted to listen to you all before I made my remarks. I have a, a few questions for Andy. Uh, first, Andy, do you know if the Texas Attorney General has provided guidelines for municipalities or local law enforcement agencies on how to store, catalog, or document any report of an abortion, miscarriage, or other reproductive health care act? If, as I'm aware of it, no, Councilman, we haven't gotten any direction or guidance on that specifically. Thank you. And then how does the phrase strictly for the purpose of pursuing a criminal investigation mean or, or, or what does it mean in terms of what police officers have, are obligated to report? Um, and let me, let me kind of get to why I'm asking this. Does this mean if another criminal act is suspected, so let's say family violence or rape, then the victim of the family violence um, incident would also be investigated as potentially breaking state law if they seek an abortion? You're talking about Section 3, Councilwoman? Yes. Uh, the strictly prohibited is a strictly prohib I'm sorry. The strictly for the purpose of pursuing a criminal investigation uh, is there to uh, talk about, you know, the, again, the recommendation that, citizen, that city resources not be used strictly for that purpose. It's not meant to say that if somebody reports, uh, again, a crime, they will not be investigated. Okay. And then um, how will this impact doctors or other medical care providers when miscarriage or spontaneous abortion used as terms are translated into Spanish to aborto espontaneo? Does that have legal implications? Because in Spanish, miscarriage and spontaneous abortion is translated to the same thing. Again, the, the, the resolution will not, imp uh, will not impact um, the application of either the um, trigger law or the um, heartbeat law. So if your question is to, as to how that's enforced, um, that is more a tr uh, an interpretation of those specific laws and not the resolution. 
Okay, thank you, Andy. Um, well, well, again, thank you, thank you for those answers. So today's discussion um, is divisive, and it's a topic that most people felt was settled back by um, the Supreme Court in 1973. Um, in the 1973 Roe v. Wade majority opinion, Supreme Court Justice Harry Blackmun stated, the right of privacy, whether it be founded in the 14th Amendment's concept of personal liberty and restrictions upon state action, as we feel it is, or as a district court determined in the Ninth Amendment's reservation of rights to the people is bright enough to encompass a woman's decision whether or not to terminate her pregnancy. The right to privacy should protect doctors, patients, and all others providing abortion-related medical care from undue burdens on the healthcare provider-patient relationship, so long as those decisions occur without coercion, force, or negligence. For decades, this had been the law of the land, and the possibility of now um, and the, the possibility of overturning this decision seemed unlikely to some until now. But over time, we see that our local government, the closest form of government, representative democracy, other than our school boards, is the line of defense that most people turn to. The reality is that people outside of the political realm, those who have so much to lose and yet find courage to do what is right because it is right, are the ones who have the real power to make transformational change, much like you all are here today doing. As elected officials, we are here representing the constituents in our respective districts, knowing that we will not always appease everyone or share their perspectives. For example, a majority of the residents that I represent who reached out to me supported this resolution. We ran for public office not because this role is lucrative or an easy job. We ran to serve our communities to the best of our abilities, ensuring our decisions are for the betterment of the people. Making difficult decisions is part of the responsibility we undertake as elected representatives to the San Antonio City Council. We may not always be able to impact state or federal policies, but here at the local level, we are not utterly powerless. We have the power of local control entrusted in us by residents and the duty to serve the residents of San Antonio with integrity, transparency, accountability, and most importantly, mutual respect. Public service is a public trust we earn over time. The work we do helps us earn the trust of residents who we represent to make the difficult decisions we will have to make when necessary. In the resolution, it states, the city has a responsibility to protect its residents from any violation of their protected human rights and the free exercise thereof. That responsibility is immense and can feel overwhelming at times, especially when contentious issues are discussed and it's undeniably a responsibility that we cannot take for granted. Making the medical decisions that best fit the needs of an individual are the individual's fundamental human and civil right. This is a private and intimate matter that should be left for an individual to make without fear of criminal repercussions or stigmatization. Further, further stigmatizing or criminalizing medical care and personal decisions does not serve a public good or make our community safer. We know that Bear County Criminal District Attorney's Office ultimately makes the decisions regarding prosecuting and prioritizing criminal offenses. City Council does not have the legal authority to make those decisions. We can only act within our limited purview. As the largest city in Bear County, our local law enforcement agency, San Antonio Police Department, makes the bulk of the arrest in the, in the county, so we have a responsibility to ensure that we keep our community safe. Our city has grown both in land size and population over the last few decades. So with this growth comes an increase in criminal activity and our officers are already overextended. They need resources and ability to prioritize violent crimes like homicides and aggravated assaults and focus on ensuring dangerous people are off of our streets. In fact, this weekend I went on two ride-alongs and let me tell you that legislators mandating that our police officers do more need to take a ride-along before they demand that they do so. Spending local funds to enforce state laws like the criminalization of abortion should not be on our priority list. Surveilling and launching a criminal investigation against a young teen seeking medical care is a waste of taxpayer money and a careless use of our officers' time. Our officers should be devoting resources and their efforts to deterring crime and helping keep neighborhoods safe by focusing on those individuals with extensive criminal records and who pose an imminent danger to themselves and others. With waning public trust in government, we have a responsibility to ensure residents feel safe enough to contact law enforcement and first responders in case of an emergency. 
As the resolution states, inequitable access to healthcare facilities and particularly eliminating legal access to abortion has been empirically proven to dramatically increase the risk of death and bodily injury, especially within low-income women and communities of colors. And there's an undue burden on these marginalized groups to travel to receive necessary medical care. In District 4, we have a large segment of the population who is underinsured or uninsured that does not receive access to medical care that they need. Even if they qualified for Medicaid or other firms of medical assistance, there is a reluctance to access the medical care that they need. Whether this is related to generational poverty, immigration status, family violence, low educational attainment levels, or distrust, this is a stark reality that leads to disparate health outcomes and lower life expectancy rates than in other parts of the city. This is a truth that cannot be ignored and one that is further exacerbated by teen pregnancy rates, which can be closely linked to families living in intergenerational poverty and low educational attainment levels. Three of the four zip codes with the largest levels of pregnancy rates include 78211, 78224, and 78227. They happen to be located in District 4. The poverty rate in District 4 prior to the pandemic was at 19.2%, and the rate of children living in poverty was 287 These are figures that are alarming and surely dramatically will rise with inflation, a looming recession, and uncertainty surrounding the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. Devoting city resources to criminalize people grappling with the effects of poverty is callous, and our limited public funds should be used to invest in the lives of people who are one crisis away from devastation, the children who deserve every opportunity to thrive, and the communities who have long been neglected and marginalized by systemic racism and discriminatory public policies. Many of you know that I am a single mom. I got pregnant as a teenager, and I chose to give birth. And today, I'm voting for women to be able to choose. That's how I will show my respect today. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Rocha Garcia. Councilmember Pelaez. Thank you, Mayor. I, uh, as, as more comments were coming in, I was Googling um, you know, what happened in Austin. And all you gotta do is just Google the words decriminalize abortion in Austin. And the day after the vote, the headlines read as follow, multiple headlines. Austin City Council votes to decriminalize abortion. Austin City Council decriminalizes abortion. Austin City Council passes Grace Act decriminalizing abortion. Austin fast tracks decriminalization of abortion. And that's not what they did. Austin's, abortions in Austin are still criminalized. Theirs was a rather toothless resolution like ours. I don't know why it's called the Grace Act, an act as a law. It should be, I mean, this ought to be called the Grace Resolu non-binding resolution. Um, I, I, again, I, I think you deserve more. Last night I had a conversation with, uh, with a doctor that teaches bioethics over at UT Health and described to him the, this conundrum. And the observation the doctor made was, look, you know, I don't think that this helps any of your allies. I don't think that it helps the cause to create or to be per a participant in an effort that will create the wrong impression in people's heads. Maybe not the people in this room, but the public tomorrow who reads these headlines in San Antonio really thinks that we're gonna be decriminalizing abortion in San Antonio. And to me, that just feels gross to participate in something that is, I know is gonna create the wrong impression in people's head. You can disagree with me all you want, and I, I welcome your disagreement. That's, that's the nature of a deliberative government, and, um, you know, and, and I'll take the heat for people who don't understand this position I'm taking, and that's okay too. But tonight I'm going to go home and look my kids in the eye and tell them that I think I voted the right way and I voted my conscience. I'm, uh, I'm with all of you on fighting this injustice in D.C. and the injustice in Austin. I just don't think that this is the right thing to do um, if it's going to create more confusion than less. I'm going to vote no, Mayor. Thanks. Thank you, Councilmember Pelias. Councilmember Villagran. I, I don't think this is going to create any confusion. And our media is sitting back there. I think they're going to do a good job with the headlines today. Uh, we had a councilwoman that when other councilwomen were dumbstruck and couldn't think about what the next step was, rolled up her sleeves and started working and making phone calls. And I, I want you all to know that I knew that she wasn't going to do anything 
that was going to mislead people. She was going to work hard to make sure that she represented the people on the dais. So I, I am proud of, of this resolution because it came from a woman's voice from San Antonio, from a generation that um, this is all she knew. Uh, I was born when Roe v. Wade passed. We would have celebrated 50 years together, but we're not. And so uh, I, I think it's the right choice to support this resolution today, to support our council colleagues, and, and to start the work. And we know where the work needs to be done, at the state and the federal level. And, um, and if, if there's groups out there that say, you know, but this is wrong, then give us universal health care. So that's where we're at right now. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Villagran. Councilmember Sandoval. Um, thank you, Councilwoman Villagran. I think those were uh, great, great comments. Um, I may have missed this because I stepped away for a second, but uh, Andy, did you discuss or did Eric discuss why this is a resolution and not an ordinance? I'm sorry, Councilwoman, what was the question? Um, could you explain, and I apologize if you already have, could you explain why we are adopting this as a resolution and not as an ordinance? Uh, I'll give you uh, my answer, Councilwoman, is that uh, the resolution expresses a policy recommendation from the council, um, and it does not you know, change applicable state law, um, and it does not change uh, current uh, city law in terms of enforcement of laws. So it's uh, it's a resolution because it's a it's an articulation of, of a policy from the council. Um, and is so city staff is not um, expected or required to implement this policy direction from council. Uh, again, the, under the framework of state law and the city charter, the council cannot direct the city manager to enforce or not enforce specific laws. What you, the council can do is express its, its, its views on you know, what city resources should be used and what the prioritization can be. And again, I don't want to speak for Eric, but he will listen to that um, and use that uh, as he works with uh, the police department and enforcement of the laws. To give you a clear example, I guess if, if this passes, I doubt very seriously that Eric will then start a task force of the SAPD specifically geared to enforce abortion laws because clearly the articulation of the council is you don't want resources being spent that way. At the same time, the resolution does not decriminalize uh, if the trigger law comes into effect. So again, if somebody reports um, a violation of law, the SAPD will have the legal obligation, just like any other law, to enforce it as applicable. Um, thank you, Andy. And uh, Eric, is there anything you want to add on to that? Well, I'll just reiterate what, what Andy said. I mean, I think the, the balance of the language in the resolution, given the, um, the lack of clarity on the trigger law and the outstanding legal cases, um, there is um, there is lack of clarity on what exists statewide. That is juxtaposed with the the fact that um, I have a responsibility under the charter, um, as well as every police officer who works for us and is licensed by the state. So, um, as the matter is dealt with um, in either the courts or the legislature, and there's more clarity, I mean, it's obviously something we're going to have to deal with. But as a priority, and more to the question that Councilwoman Castillo talked about when you look at the litany of 911 calls that we receive, how we prioritize them, that does not um, mean that if somebody shows up at public safety headquarters or a substation to report a crime, whatever the crime is, that is a report that the police department is required to take. And, 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 and as we get uh, in section six of the, or of the resolution, um, talks about me updating the council in the event uh, of any future changes uh, of federal law, state law, or technology that affect the resolution, the policy recommendation of the council. Thank you. I have another question. I know you just remembered we only have three minutes on the second round. Um, but the way that, you know, with what's happening at the state and the federal level, what we will have is a lot more need for um, maternal care, 
pregnancy care, uh, child care, infant care, um, we'll have a lot more needs in, in San Antonio among a certain segment of the population, the one who uh, is unable to leave the state to secure an abortion if that had been their choice. Um, are we making any preparations as a health department or health authority uh, for that eventuality? Councilwoman, that's something that as, um, and frankly, I think that's a matter for us to also discuss as a potential legislative priority of the cities um, and, and potentially um, uh, an, an additional ask of the state from their budget standpoint. We'll need to have a little bit more time locally to understand what those impacts are. But I can tell you that absent all that, we didn't have enough resources for things like WIC that is federally funded. Uh, we don't have enough resources for childhood immunizations um, that's funded through the federal government and the state. So we're already in a position where we don't have those resources. Um, and, and I think that, that um, we should consider whether or not that becomes part of our, our larger program. Yeah, Thank, you, Thank, you, Thank you, Councilmember Sandoval. Thank you, Councilmember Sandoval. Councilmember McKee Rodriguez. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm just dead at this, like, all of a sudden disdain for resolutions. Um, I've, been critical of resolu <laughs> I've been critical of resolutions with no teeth and with no procedural or budgeting recommendations to back them up, and I walked around for months pissing all of y'all off trying to get signatures on a site and release ordinance and struggled because of similar state law and charter limitations, only to have an insincere effort take precedence if what I'm, if what I'm hearing today is to be believed. So I'm quite interested in the parallels. However, in, t in speaking about resolutions, the items that we pass, including resolutions, are opportunities for us as a council and as a city organization to be held accountable. If we pass this item today, it makes clear our expectations of city funds. And if I understand my colleagues correctly, our expectation is that when you come to us with the city budget, we should see that there are no anti-abortion task forces or units in our police department. There will be no additional monies allocated to criminalizing abortion, and the officers should not be spending uh, city time targeting those who seek or have had abortions, for example. Our expectation in passing this resolution is that we are empowering our lobbying team and making this a priority this upcoming legislative session. That's my understanding. <laughs> And the moment that we step outside of the bounds of the agreement laid out in this is when the public can step forward and call out the hypocrisy and it empowers them to use people power, just as was used today, and apply pressure on us to, man to maintain our agreement because a resolution is a community agreement. I know this question was asked in a different way, but Andy, I'm gonna ask this question for you. You know, honesty is important. Can you please describe the difference between a resolution and an ordinance? I'll give you the general answer, Councilman, because again, it would always depend on the wording of the resolution or the wording of the ordinance. But generally, the conceptual difference is the re resolution usually announces, articulates a policy recommendation or a policy direction uh, from the city council to the extent it has the ability to direct something. Um, whereas an ordinance is a city law that then becomes enforceable by uh, whether that be code or, or the police officers to enforce. So one has the, the, uh, the power of law, so to speak. The other one is an articulation of policy that again provides information, not only to the public, but also to the city manager in terms of how the council views a certain uh, policy or, or, or a certain process. So uh, that's the, the difference. So as a final plea to um, my council colleague in District 8, um, and to all council colleagues here is that when we're making, when we're doing our interviews about this item and we're talking about what it is that we're doing and not doing and the actions that still need to be taken, be honest. Be honest in saying that this is our expectation of city funds. There's still more work to be, do, to be done at the state and federal level. That is absolutely necessary. Be honest. But I ask my colleagues to vote in support of this because it is making clear our expectation of city funds. It's making clear our stance on this action that was taken. This is a direct response. Um, and that, and I know I'm not really in the place to ask you too much because I know we'd be sneak, sneak dissing each other on the lowest and highest of keys, but I do hope that um, 
we have a larger conversation about resolutions, but that we're also honest about what it is that we seek to accomplish with every resolution we do. And with this one, I think we are being very clear. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember McKee Rodriguez, Councilmember Castillo. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I want to respond to a couple of the things that my colleague brought up. Uh, I, I understand the comparison to Austin, and I hear you on that. Um, and I appreciate the mansplaining on the Austin <laughs> resolution. Um, and, and I also understand how, as a straight male, that you don't understand the impact that this resolution will have on and for individuals who can carry a child. When Roe v. Wade was overturned, I received a number of texts and emails and tweets from folks outside of District 5 asking, where does the city of San Antonio stand? What are we going to do to ensure that women are protected or feel and know that city council is not going to prioritize the criminalization of the act of a woman taking care of her health? Um, so while to you as a man who can is toothless for the constituents throughout San Antonio who reached out to my office through social media, through our constituent services calls, this means something and this holds weight. No doubt this is a first step and I'm extremely pleased with your, your take on a resolution, and, uh, on an ordinance rather than a resolution because you, my homie, I'm are gonna, the chair of the IGC, the IG I'm going to ask my colleagues <laughs> um, collectively to please address the okay. chair. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, point being, right, um, the comments made by my colleague, he is the chair of the IGR committee, so we're going to take him up on the opportunity as someone who controls the agenda of that committee to ensure that he prioritizes abortion and reproductive access as well as access to contra contraceptions. So I, I challenge my colleague to go with me to Austin to advocate on behalf of women, and I know you are an advocate based off of your work with domestic violence, I know you are, um, but I challenge you to join me in Austin. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councilmember Castillo. All right, well, again, I wanna thank Councilmember Castillo, all my colleagues for the deliberation up here. Um, this is a, uh, a subject, obviously, that carries a lot of weight, and so the comments were deliberative and thoughtful, and again, the work has been respectful. So uh, with that, we do have a motion and a second for approval of the resolution. Hearing no further discussion, please vote. Aye. Motion carries. All right. The time is now 5.32 p.m. on this second day of August 2022. Our city council meeting is now adjourned. Thank you all.